Calling to order the Municipality of Monroeville's Citizens Night and Regular Council meeting for April 13th, 2021. It is 7 p.m. Could all please rise for the Pledge of Allegiance, followed by a moment of silence. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. may be seated. Roll call, please. Mayor Greeslock? Here. Mrs. Gatos? Here. Mr. Poach? Here. Mr. Harvey? Here. Mr. Wolfram? Here. Mr. Arsenko? Here. Mr. Williams? Here. Mr. Wilson? Mr. Wilson? Wilson's here. here. Mr. Here. Little? Here. Mr. Ratcher? Here. Ms. Rock? Mr. Hugis? Here. Mr. Sedlak? Here. Mr. Weldon? Here. Welcome. So we're going to start with our Citizens Night section of the meeting. Uh, anyone that would like to address council, uh, now would be your time to do it on any municipal matter. Uh, anyone that's here with any of the developments uh, today, you can hold off until later in the meeting. But if there's any citizens that have signed in, now would be your chance to address council. Sir, if you could just uh, state your name for the record. Have you already signed in? I am. And actually, while you're there, are there other people signed in as well? None. None? Okay. So please state your name for the record, and the floor is yours. Good evening. My name is Len Young, resident of Monroeville, longtime resident at that. I um, want to uh, address the uh, cleanup day for April 24th. Uh, just want to report that Cooper Road in Monroeville has already been cleaned up. My neighbor and I went out last week and picked up a lot of stuff, mm -hmm. and it's all shiny clean right now. Well, a couple errant cans uh, since then, but certainly uh, we picked up a lot of stuff. So we got a little jump on that, because neither of us are gonna be around on the 24th, so that's all clean. Thank you. Um, few budget items. I looked over the budget on February 2nd, Groundhog Day, after watching uh, the telecast on the Pennsylvania Cable Network, PCN, watching the whole thing with the groundhog. The only thing missing was all the people. It was a shame. But uh, the uh, groundhog Punxsutawney Phil did predict six weeks <laughs> of winter. Fortunately, we only got about four of them, and then things mild, got sort of mild after that. Anyway, after that, I went up my office, spent about three hours looking over the Monroeville budget, and I had a few items that uh, were, I inquired to somebody about that and uh, they were addressed, but I uh, just wanted to sort of bring these points up real quickly. Under the uh, Recreation and Parks Human Services part, uh, the SWIM programs, you it's have just- a page number or a section or? Uh, let's see. Uh, I'm trying to get there, but. Department of Recreation and Parks Human Services 2021. It's just under Parks and Records. Yeah, Good I enough. didn't write down the page number. Good Sorry enough. about that. The only thing is, they have a dollar amount for the years like the year 2020 is expressed as $2,020. And the year 2021 is expressed as $2,021. No big deal there. That's for the swim programs, the adult swim programs. Traffic signals. Um, there's $4,500 budgeted for telephone service for the traffic signals. I thought that was a little bit high, $4,500. Whoever's using doing the traffic signals, that they have a $4,500 expense for that. And I'm not looking for answers tonight, so don't go crazy. I'm just sort of pointing these things out. They uh, seemed a little unusual. Um, PC slash FR. I think that's, uh, let's see, stormwater repair. I believe it has to do with stormwater repair. Audit and accounting. $572,036.24 for audit and accounting on the stormwater repair. The repair itself is budgeted for $300,000. $300,000. Now, I'm paying my fees every year, like we all, us good citizens should. But I just found that a little odd that the auditing and accounting 
expense is $572,000. $36.24. You're making this really difficult on us because we don't have our budgets in front okay. of us. Okay, we can just write it down and check it later. Had, yeah. You know, that people could come up and we could sit with it in front of us. Yeah. We had all our department heads with us. Yeah. That would have been a lot more beneficial, I think, for you as yeah. well as me. Okay. I'm just throwing right them out there, I'm that's all. Like I said, I'm not looking for a response. I'm just betting you that if I we had our budget in front of us, we would have notes. We probably could. Yeah. Let's, let, okay. let's let him just finish Just make a note. What the heck. Yeah. Um, Mayor and Council, eight part-time positions for 2021. Uh, eight part-time positions. I don't know what that... That would have been summer help. Summer help. Would be my guess off the top of my head. Okay. To do what? To work for, in the different departments around Monroeville. Our money for, our for the Mayor and Council, though? That's, that's not public to, works. We, we each get to hire... No, no, the, the summer kids that we employ at the road department, guard, uh, you know, wherever, come under our budget. Correct. I see. It's not a public works thing. Yet. But it is a public works thing, but it happens to come out of our budget. Yes. So it's because they're in different departments. Well, they we also have work here at the Borough Building. There. They work for Park and Rex Cutting Grass. I mean, that's the, yeah, but we put it under our budget. And then okay. traditionally what's happened is that uh, there's been an employee from each of the wards. So as a way to make it equitable for all the different kids that were applying, that there would be maybe one or two from each ward. Yes. Okay. Works for me. Uh, let's see. Telephone and telegraph for mayor and council, $16,116. I mean, my cell phone bill, I wouldn't say it's high, but it's not real low. But it just seemed like a pretty big expense for telephone and telegraph. I mean, I don't even know if you're still using the telegraphs at all, but that uh, seems to be quite a bit. Um, another thing I couldn't figure out, and maybe it's just my own lack of knowledge with, the with uh, budgets, the revenue numbers were negative and the expenditures were positive. Any particular reason for that? It's a software program. Just the way it was laid out. Okay. I mean, is that correct, though, or should it be changed? <laughs> no, that is, that is correct. Having the revenue numbers negative and the, the expenditures program. positive. That's not unusual. Right? I, got some I got some stuff to learn then. Um, street lighting, $310,000. Didn't we get the new uh, LED lights? Still working on it. Yeah, working on it. That seems like a lot of money for street lights, but uh, got to have them, of course. Uh, park maintenance, the telephone, again, the telephone expense, $1,500 for park maintenance, specifically in the telephone, and the tree maintenance, $350. Mm. Uh, the telephone expense is like four times more than the tree maintenance expense. It would seem to me that the park maintenance should involve a little more with maintaining the trees. Uh, I will tell you, as an arborist, I look at the trees and the Monroeville Park, really, they're doing a nice job up there. The trees look very good, but it would just seem that maybe you should put a little more expense into the maintenance. Uh, same thing with the community park. We have a $3,000 expense for telephone at the community park, and the tree maintenance is $1,000. Other than that, um, I'd like to invite everybody to attend the American Legion Gold Star Post 820 Bingo Saturday, and ev Saturday evening, 7 p.m., for your edification and the promotion of the, of the post. Bottom of Duff Road, Old William Penn Highway, 7 p.m., Saturday night. Bring your money and uh, have some fun. It's, it's really a good time. 7 p.m., Saturday nights. Uh, one last thing. In case you didn't know, I am uh, going to be on the ballot for Council Ward 3 and just want to promote myself a little bit to uh, get some, some votes for my candidacy on May 18th. Um, one last thing, actually, there's going to be some referendums on the ballot. Uh, it's a, a statewide referendum. Please vote yes for the first two amendments. Just a little plug for them. Uh, very important to have the government run properly in the state of Pennsylvania. That's Thank all. You, Len. Good night. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. Mr. Young, uh, just as a follow-up, yes. um, email me all your questions you just had with the budget, and I'll okay. email you back the answers. Thank you. I appreciate okay. it. Okay. Anyone else like to address council on any municipal item or citizens night? I'm assuming everyone else has signed in as pride developers for the meeting later. Okay. Is there anyone else? Now's your chance to address council on not only any municipal item, but also the items we are about to go over that are on actually on the agenda. 
Seeing none, we're going to close that part of the meeting or move over to our regular council meeting. We have an executive session announcement. The council conducted an executive session before tonight's council meeting on Tuesday, April 13th from 6.15 to approximately 7 p.m. For personnel and litigation reasons, council legislative action, if any, shall be taken at tonight's council meeting. Council, moving over to our minutes. We have minutes to approve from the Citizens' Night meeting of March 9th, 2021, and the regular council meeting of March 9th, 2021. Motion. Second. Right, motion to approve and a second. Any questions or comments? Seeing none, we have a motion and a second to approve. Roll call, please. Mrs. Gatos? Aye. Mr. Poach? Aye. Mr. Harvey? Aye. Mr. Wolfram? Aye. Mr. Orsenko? Aye. Mr. Williams? Aye. Mr. Wilson? Aye. The ayes have it. Our reports of our tax collections. Is there a motion to approve? So moved. Second. 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 A motion and a second to approve. Any questions or comments? Seeing none, motion and a second to approve. Roll call, please. Mm -hmm. Mr. Wilson? Um, he said aye. He he said aye. Mr. Aye. Williams? Aye. Mr. Orsenko? Aye. Mr. Wolfram? Aye. Mr. Harvey? Aye. Mr. Poach? Aye. Mrs. Gatos? Aye. The ayes have it. List of bills and budget transfers. Is there a motion to approve? Motion. Second. Motion and a second to approve the list of bills and budget transfers. Any questions or comments? Council? No, sir. Seeing none, roll call, please. There is a motion and a second to approve these. Mrs. Gatos? Aye. Mr. Poach? Aye. Mr. Harvey? Aye. Mr. Wolfram? Aye. Mr. Orsenko? Aye. Mr. Williams? Aye. Mr. Wilson? Aye. The ayes have it. And payroll report, is there a motion to approve? Motion to approve. Second. Motion and a second to approve. Any comments or questions? Seeing none, roll call, please. Mr. Wilson? Tom. Mr. Wilson? Tom. Aye. Mr. Williams? Aye. Mr. Osenko? Aye. Mr. Wolfram? Aye. Mr. Harvey? Aye. Mr. Poach? Aye. Mrs. Gatos? Aye. The ayes have it. Council, moving over to our vacancies on boards, commissions, and authorities in your packet. It's in the blue section, if you could move back to it. Mrs. Gatos, do you have anything this evening? Um, I don't believe so. If you, uh, oh, wait, yes, I do. We nominated uh, Mr. Um, Eddie Lukowitz for the Police Civil Service Commission mm -hmm. last month, and I would like to make that an appointment, please. So it's a motion to appoint Ed Lukowitz? Yes. Is there a second? Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? The ayes have it. Anything else, Mrs. Gators? Um, do not believe that I have anything else. No, that's all Mr. I have. Mr. Poach. I don't think I have anything on expert. No, I don't think I have anything now. No, sir. Mr. Harvey. Nothing. Mr. Wolfram. I believe I have one here to, uh, let's see, she's on the, already nominated, so it would be to, uh, what I'm looking for for her. Um, a point. A point. Yeah, uh, 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 Debbie Dillman on the, uh, what is it, the Park and Recreation. I'll second that. that. That is a motion, a motion. Mr. Wolfram. That's a motion to appoint, appoint yes. Debbie Dillman to the Recreation yeah. and Parks Advisory Board. I'm taking down my mask. I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> yes. That's a motion second. and a second. Yes. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Ayes have it. Mr. Wolfram, anything else? No, sir. Mr. Arasenko? Nothing, Mayor. Mr. Williams? Nothing. Mr. Wilson? No, thank you. Very good. Moving over to our bids and proposals in your white section council. We have four items this evening. Mr. Little, please. Yes, we have the uh, bids at this time of the year for the commodity bids, the paving program, the fog seal program, and the uh, crack seal program. And Mr. Yugas here, Director of Engineering and Public Works, is, is um, going to add any kind of detail uh, that we need uh, the first one here on the commodity bids, uh, baseball infield mix. We did not receive any uh, bids for it, um, so if we didn't receive any bids, we are at the um, liberty to go out and get the best um, uh, amount we can for the for price per ton. 
And uh, so Mr. Hugus will take care of that as far as a baseball infield mix. We received no bids for that. Uh, the second item is for uh, bituminous paving material. And we received three bids, Tresco Paving, Russell Standard, and Highway. And for the uh, asphalt plant stockpile for at the plant, picking it up at the plant, uh, Tresco for the most part, uh, just for the sake of the public, uh, Consul has a spreadsheet on all these items and a lot of commodity bids. They're very voluminous, but um, the um, liquid fuels auditor says we should read part of this into the minutes, so this is going to be a little bit tedious. Okay, so uh, Tresco received the majority of that except for one bid, and then Russell Standard received the other one, and Highway received the other one. I'm not going to go into the amounts. If anybody would like a copy of this, they can uh, receive a copy of it under the Right to Know Law, um, and we can also even put it on our website. Um, okay, also on the asphalt that's delivered, uh, Tresco uh, received the majority of that, and also Russell Standard. I received a partial of that. Highway did not uh, have a low bid on any of them. Okay, that's on a bituminous paving. Okay, on crack sealant, we had one bid. And when we get one bid, as council knows, council can accept it or reject it. And in the past, we have always accepted it, unless council wants to do something other than that. I would assume we're going to be accepting the bid, and this is from uh, AirVac Equipment from Dairy PA, and so it's one low bid for uh, crack sealant. Question: Is that a fair? Yeah. Yes. yes. Price? I mean, this yes. is typical to what happens with the crack sealant. Okay. Very good. Sounds good. Okay. The, the next one is uh, crushed stone. We only received uh, one bid for that, and that's Hanson Aggregate, and Council can see the uh, the aggregate of the aggregate. Mm -hmm. um, at the bottom, and we have 12 different items here, and I'm not going to go through and read them all. Same question, though? Uh, yes, that is correct. Yes, yes, it is. Okay. We had two bidders last year, but we actually had to disqualify because the second bidder was not a PennDOC qualified um, producer of the aggregate. Okay, the next one is for guide rail, and again, we only received uh, one bid, and that's from Chemung of Elmira, New York. And the first item, as council can see, is to furnish and install. Uh, and the next item is to furnish the material only. And again, the same question, is that a fair price, Paul? Yes. OK. okay. Uh, fence materials. Uh, we did not receive any bid for that. And once again, we can go out and get the, uh, we're at liberty to go out and get the best price that we can because we received no bid. Uh, reinforced. Concrete products. Uh, we received only one bid from Culverts of Coriopolis, PA, and Council can see the aggregate amount of $160,000, and there's 17 individual items here. And once again, I'm not going to read through them all. Uh, sewer pipe. Uh, we received two bids uh, one from Chemung Supply and one from Culverts. And the one is for a gasketed bell and spigot smooth wall storm sewer pipe. And on that one, uh, Chemung, on all the items, the eight items, eight items had the lowest bid. Uh, so um, one comment for that, please. Yeah. Items nine through thirteen, I would recommend you do not award those uh, to culverts. We can buy which, them locally. We can buy them locally at a lower ones cost. Separate, nine to twelve. Yes. Yeah. Items nine through I'm sorry, nine through thirteen. So, so I would award items one through eight to just Chemung. One through eight. Okay, and Correct. then nine to twelve, we're going to do what with? Not, nine. not okay. award them. Okay. <laughs> okay. Okay. Moving over, uh, the next is a sign material. We had three bids: one from Vulcan Signs, another one from Osborne, and another one from Chemung Supply Corporation. And on the aluminum sign blanks, uh, Vulcan Signs had the low bid on all 30 items. On one sign, call out on this real quick. Go ahead. <coughs> Excuse me. Osborne is the one that had no bid bond with Correct. their bid, so they were automatically yeah. disqualified. Yeah, they did not have a bid bond. Um, yeah, you have that parenthetically at the top, Paul. Mm -hmm. Yes. Mm -hmm. Okay. And the other items, the items 35 through 40, I would not 
award that either. Can I ask why reading. we're going to give the 34 to just the, the one, two, Chemung Supply instead of just give it all to Balkan? I'm, I'm sorry, Ms. Gators, one See more number time. number 34? Yes. We're highlighted f for that to go to... Yes, because the well, they were the lowest bidder oh, so on that specific bid. line item. That they were one, the lowest, so yes. one line item that we'll give them? Okay. Oh, which one were you talking about? You didn't want to? 35 through 40, the last 35 grouping. 35 through 40, okay. okay. And you're, you're okay with the 1 through 30? Yes, sir. Because it's the same scenario if, 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 there are, if Osborne is automatically disqualified. Right. Yes. You and the opportunity to. And you're, right. good, you're good 31 through 34. Correct. I mean, as you can see, that we, we still put the prices in from Osborne, but they did not provide a bid bond with their bid, which right. automatically disqualifies right. them, but they were still close in price with Vulcan. Okay. Okay, any other questions, Council? No, sir. Okay, uh, small paving in place. Uh, we did not receive any bids for that. So once again, we're at liberty to seek the lowest price on our own. Uh, next one is storm sewer grates, frames, risers, and lids. We um, have re received three bids, uh, one from Chemung Supply, another one from Culverts Incorporated, another one from EJ USA, which is East Jordan uh, USA. And as far as on the Type M inlet frames and grates, EJ U USA had the lowest bid on those six items. And the Type II grade adjustment risers, it was a hodgepodge between Chemung and Culverts on what a, on items 7 through 14 on which one had the lowest price. And the last item, storm manhole frames, lids and risers, EJ once again had the lowest price on items 15 through 19. Okay. okay. And the last one is wood safety surfacing material. We received one bid from J.A. Rudder here in Monroeville, and council can see the aggregate of that of $10,530. Any questions at all from council on the commodity bids for 2021? No questions. I thank you all for all that you do. No problem. Would it be a problem to get it? We're spending a lot of the taxpayer money. Is it, would it be too hard to put it on uh, our website? No, not at all. No. If you would, I'd Yeah, it. sure. No, I think yeah. Thing. Definitely should. Yeah. Okay, so, Go so ahead. Council, any other questions, Council, at this point about what mm -hmm. Mr. Little went over, Mr. Hugis? Uh, so is there a motion to approve these bids with the exception of sewer pipe items 9 through 13 and signed materials items 35 through 40 as was discussed? So moved. Second. 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 The motion is second to approve as outlined. Yes. Any other questions about these items? Mm -hmm. Seeing none, roll call please. Mrs. Gatos? Aye. Mr. Poach? Aye. Mr. Harvey? Aye. Mr. Wolfram? Aye. Mr. Arsenko? Aye. Mr. Williams? Aye. Mr. Wilson. Aye. The ayes have it. Uh, next item, Mr. Little. Okay, the 2021 paving program. Um, we have received uh, four bids, uh, one from Tresco Paving, one from CHD Enterprises, another one from A. Felino Construction, and then one, another one from Maley and Maley. And as council can see. Tim, uh, there's a second page. I was going to say, there's, yeah, there, I have two sheets, Tim. There's a second page. Oh, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. My fault, my fault. I thought that was a little light there. We opened up more than that yes. last week. Nine. I'm sorry. We have nine, Dairy Construction, Young, Bu Young Blood Paving, and Liberoni, and Redstone Excavating, and El Grande Industries. I didn't miss any, did I? I didn't think so, okay. All right, and you have those in ascending order, I think, Paul. That's correct. Yeah, and Tresco is the low bid at five hundred and thirty thousand seven hundred and thirty dollars and there was um during the bid opening actually ch and d enterprises was the lowest bidder but we went back and checked the mathematics and there was an error in our mathematics which then made them the second lowest bidder i contacted them they acknowledged their error and understood that they would not be the lowest bidder and, and this pricing came in Extremely yeah, well. actually, in, in totality, 
with all three of the bids, they're about 25% lower than what we had estimated. I actually thought it would be higher because we talked about it before with the oil index. Right. Mm -hmm. We thought that the cost would go up, but as it turns out that there's, um, there's a lot of contractors that need work. So they're, they're, as you can see with nine bidders on the project, yeah, um, surprising. it's actually 25% lower than what we thought. So in aggregate with all these together, you're, we're looking at about $200,000 less than what we had estimated um, for the program. We've so, yeah. We've I'm used Tresco before. Right? Oh, yes, absolutely. And so could we also then, Mr. Little, look at the idea of um, adding maybe some more paving? That's, money that's, that we're saving? that's at the pleasure of council. I think we should at absolutely. least look into it. Um, I would like to at least see some numbers as to what we would add in for that money that we save. Yeah, because we've because already budgeted a certain can, amount. Yes, right. the more that, uh, right. roads we can get. I mean, the price certainly. that you got now, 200000 you could pave, uh, you could mill and pave it one more mile. Yeah. Or you could silk code four more miles. Right. Or so you could do a combination of both. Mm -hmm. So if you would make that recommendation to us, I'd appreciate it. Mr. Harvey. I was going to bring that very subject up, not only under this, but uh, under the, uh, the possible federal money that's coming. Would we be permitted to use that for paving? Uh, yeah, I, I would um, say yes to that without actually. I mean, I'm not saying we're guaranteed we're getting it, but if we do, would we be permitted to use it for this? Yes, I mean, because we can use that money for any lack of revenue that we did not bring in, and I would assume under our business tax that we will have a, a lack of revenue, a, 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 um, a reduction of revenue. We've budgeted in that fashion, mm -hmm. and I assume we will. So, assuming, oh, wait a minute, let me reward that. Yeah. Um, <laughs> if we get that federal <laughs> stimulus money, we would be permitted to use. Well, it all it all goes into the general fund, so well, actually. I didn't know if there was a restriction on what you used it for. Well, th there is, but if we have a reduction in revenue to the same amount that we're going to receive this year, which is approximately one point three million dollars, and then the next one point three million dollars will be next year, I feel confident. Without we don't know what we're getting on the business tax yet. But if we get only less than $1.3 million this year, I would be surprised. Well, when, when would you anticipate knowing about that? Okay, I've been in, t uh, Pat Fulkerson, our tax collector, I I've spoken with him at length over the past two weeks. And he says the money is coming in, uh, in, in a good fashion with respect to what we budgeted. Now, we usually take in about seven point five million uh, in business tax. Now, we didn't budget that last year, if you remember. We budgeted about three million. Mm -hmm. So he feels confident that, that w and this is just supposition, let's keep that in mind, okay? Uh, he feels confident that we, we would hit that budgeted figure. Now, that's- That's three million, Tim. That's three million, that's three million dollars. That's four million dollars less, that, or four, excuse me, four million. So that's about three million dollars less than what we normally budget. Okay. But I'm saying as far as receiving the stimulus money, when would you know about that? Well, we're supposed to receive that by June 10th. So we could, we could add that. We could not spend budget money on the extra paving and wait for that money. Sure. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, there's different ways to do it. I want to finish up on what I was trying to ask. If indeed um, we find out that we've gotten in more revenue than we were hoping, or we're hoping to get in more, how long do these prices last for that we can say add in another Thank half a million you. dollars yeah, or a quarter question. of a million dollars? That was the next one. We typically, it takes us about 30 days to get all the contract, contractual information executed. Okay. You know, so you're probably looking by. So we, we, we'd know. have till next council meeting maybe? Yeah, oh yes. And I mean, therefore, we'd know kind of how the tax base came in. And in so April 15th. Yes, is which is when, right around the bend. Exactly. And so, it would give us the time to right. realize. Well, how long is this price good for? The bid? Once we once we execute the contract, well, the bid's good for forty five days, but then once we execute the contract, that locks everything in. Yes. So if we were to, to, to add budget money to, to repaving streets mm -hmm. to get that price, we'd have to tell them within forty five days. Not necessarily. We could do a change order. Well, that, that's we the want next to try question. and do it for next month, though. Hmm. Yeah, that was a question I was asked. Just to refresh everyone's memory, I believe we're about a five hundred thousand less. 
Yeah, we well, we should be paving about. We should be using about two million a year. We're not talking about in the past. We we're at one point five. You're at one this year. And where, what, what were we again at this year? One million this year. Right. We're typically around one five. We should be at two. Yeah, we did that on the basis of the, what Kim described as the budget Correct. deficit. Right. We anticipated. So what's this uh, gonna? I think we want to get be there. Now? A million. One million. Well, eight hundred thousand. One hundred. I'm sorry. One million was allocated, right. with all the total bids, which we haven't finished with that yet. Or at about eight hundred thousand. So, he's so gonna give there's us still two hundred thousand. Right. So there a, there. a reasonable approach is twenty. We're saving twenty percent essentially. So I think what everybody's saying is, okay, yeah, maybe we should what add twenty percent. Let's spend that twenty percent. Yes. Right. But then let's uh, the rest of stuff I think we should be down. cautious about because mm -hmm. we really don't know what this budget year is going to go as far as talking about. Going well, that's why I was talking about the use of the stimulus money. Well, I think we should also be cautious of that too, based on how. And the figures come from the tax. Yeah, we and even see, the next next year's budget. We may be able to use the tax money if it comes in a little bit better first, and then the use the stimulus money for something else. Being that we'll know tax money first before we know stimulus. Yeah, but let's don't forget if we don't take care of our infrastructure, it's going to cost 100%, us a hundred percent. Which is why I want why I think we need to spend that extra two hundred on the roads, I and agree. possibly That's more. So and let's and at least start budget. with that. Yeah, and that, that was the consensus that I, I was asking the point, point I asked before is. We got to two million year before last, right? Last year. Two uh, years ago. Two years, two years ago. ago. Two years ago. That's right. Okay. Two years ago. Huh? Not all COVID. I'm just getting there. <laughs> to do that. Uh, I'm getting better with it too. Um, to do that. And that's a, as a point of discussion for this group. It'd be great if we can get there. No, I think that summarize. If we can get to one point five, I'd be thrilled. Yeah, but that's sort of summarized. So what do you want to do? Approve the two hundred thousand extra now, and then deal with see how the money comes in. Put it on paper. Actually, and, and, and he's going to yes, he's going to yeah. bring to us by next month um, another two hundred thousand dollars worth of road work to for us to because we've already we've already budgeted and different options. And I and think the if options. you guys, I know it's, this is all we always talk about. This is an important thing. So right. the to mill and pave a mile of road is a quarter of a million dollars, roughly. Well, no, based on the based figures, on these figures like based on these thousand. figures here, you you would get about a mile road with two hundred thousand. Um, which is a lot also, if people realize that. Yeah, that's a little it is, but it isn't. Isn't paying that. Right. Yeah, but also, right. he also threw out four miles of seal coat. Seal coat. Right. So he's going to come to us and give us right. a recommendation right. next there month. Could be, there there could be that. a mixed bag of how you approach it. Are we going to hold off tonight? Wait till we come back? Yes. Yeah, yeah for next month. Yes. And so for everyone that's listening, paying attention, the all the roads every year are, are evaluated and graded. They're graded on a numer numeral uh, scale. The pays are scoring, so they're all scored based on several factors. The you know are they called a sex or not? Are they how what age they are? How am I doing so far? You're you're, yeah. you're getting there. The, all the items, basically everything that's on the road itself. Mm -hmm. So it's you an it's an objective <laughs> it's an objective. I'm waiting to see how well you listened. Right. It's an objective. <laughs> for a little. It's an objective form. So the thing is, Mr. Hughes isn't going to just run out and grab a couple streets. We already have that done. We have every street right. ranked. It's been, it does it every, we do it every year. So it's, I don't say it's easy, but we can always go back to the right. list and say it's based on needs. Yeah. Based on needs, exactly. My boss says there's needs and wants. <laughs> well, we would want. Want. The, uh, we want. No, want. Like you recommend yes. that. Yeah, yeah we, we want. want. Thank you. <laughs> Whatever <laughs> council wants. That's what we want. That's what we want. <laughs> there, so, uh, He's sitting right up there. Yeah. That's, but all in all, this is good news uh, for no. these uh, the programs. For us. So is there a, uh, what we discussed so far, is there a motion to approve actually the bids that we have in front of us? Well, we have to, we, we need to cover one more thing with the other bids. So you want to do them individually? Yeah. Okay, we, let's do, yeah, because it's paving, it's cracked seal, right. seal coat, exactly. Seal. We, let's do all those together. Yes, thank you. Okay, the, uh, the next is the seal coat. And we have received uh, two uh, bids uh, one from Russell Standard and one from I'm missing on a pay, young blood young blood paving and as council can see the low bid is uh, Russell Standard at um, for the bituminous silk code is uh, one hundred six thousand dollars one hundred six three hundred fifty four point six nine in the bituminous alternate number two is eighty five thousand three hundred seventy four dollars and twenty five cents so Russell Standard has the low bid not to be related or this this point but we're going to use alternate number two let me explain real quick it goes back to the commodities bid we're buying this the aggregate directly instead of having the contractor buy the aggregate so we're saving money 
on that. So that's why we're using alternate number two, which is that's why it's that much lower. That's what I'm talking about. That's what I'm talking about. Okay. And and the next one is self explanatory. Yes. Okay, and the fog seal, uh, we received uh, two bids on that, and one from Holbein Incorporated from Sarver, PA, and the other one from Russell Standard of Mars, PA, and the low bid on that is Holbein at $132,349.74. Okay, Council, we have three, uh, three bids in front of you, the 21-01, Dash PAV, the 21 02 SC, and 21 03 FS. So that's the paving program, the seal coat crack seal program, and the fog seal program. Motion to approve as um, recommended. recommended by Mr. Davis. Second. We have a motion and a second to approve. Any other questions or comments? Council. Seeing none, there's a motion and a second to approve. Roll call, please. Mr. Wilson? Aye. Mr. Williams? Aye. Mr. Arsenko? Aye. Mr. Wolfram? Aye. Mr. Harvey? Aye. Mr. Poach? Aye. Mrs. Gatos? Aye. The ayes have it. Thank you, Mr. Hugus. Thank you. Thank you for all the Thank work. Paul. Thanks, Paul. Council, moving over to our consent agenda, we have uh, old business that was tabled from previous meetings. Uh, Mr. Little. Yeah, the uh, first item is actually the first three items are 20-6ST uh, 4301 Northern Pike Partners LLC, Starbucks. Applicants requesting site plan approval to construct a 2,000 square foot building and associated site amenities. The property is 2.752 acres located 4301 Northern Pike, tax parcels 85. 856S76 and 856S090 in the C2 Business Commercial District. I Mr. make a motion to take it off of tables. <laughs> yeah, here, slow down, everybody. <laughs> Kill. Wow. Okay, so uh, someone's excited. There was a there's a motion to on table. On, on table. table, correct. And a second. Second. And the motion second on table all three items. That's yes. correct. Yes, please. Okay, so. Motion second to untable. All this is just to allow this to be moved forward on. So a vote in the affirmative is to remove from the table to allow us to discuss it. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Roll call, please. Mrs. Gatos? Aye. Mr. Poach? Aye. Mr. Harvey? Aye. Mr. Wolfram? Aye. Mr. Arsenko? Aye. Mr. Williams? Aye. Mr. Wilson? Aye. The ayes have it. And before we get started, welcome. Sure. Uh, we do have three items here. So one is a site plan approval. Uh, one is a preliminary and final subdivision approval to consolidate the tax parcels. And then the third one is a conditional use approval. And the third one, the conditional use, is actually a public hearing item. Mr. Rafter, we should do the public hearing first on this? Yeah, I'd do the public hearing first, and then you'll have the benefit of all the background information in with the public hearing record. Yeah, and this happens uh, very often. We have a, an item like this where there's a few things that we're dealing with. We're dealing with a conditional use because someone wants to do something that they have to ask special permission for, so to speak, and that's a public hearing item where we have folks that come up and speak about it. Um, but then we also have some of the other things that are more traditionally in which people aren't sworn in. So we're going to do the conditional use portion, but certainly probably as we get going into this, they're kind of all gonna be lumped together a little bit and that's okay, we'll, we'll, we'll talk about all of it. But, uh, so we'll start with the conditional use. Uh, sir, if you could uh, state your name for the record and you can just stand um, to that one side of sure. the podium for now. I'm gonna ask if you can take your, if, take your mask off I'm while you're speaking so that we can hear you properly. I'm happy to do that, thank and you. Do you wanna swear everybody in? Yeah, so we'll do that. So if you want to, uh, We'll get your names first, and then sure. also what we'll do is Thank if there's anyone in the audience from the public Thank you. that plans on t adding testimony to this item, I will ask them to be sworn in as well. If you change your mind, and, uh, and don't do it now, but as we discuss things, members of the, uh, of the public, if you decide to add testimony, you can always come up and do it. I'll make sure everybody has plenty of opportunity to do so, and they can be sworn in at that time. So we'll start with the, the, the definites that are, that are here. Gentlemen, if you want to come up to the podium. Great. 
great. And we have uh, Baron Common Good. If you just please. And then it's once again, anybody from the audience, anyone else that would like to add, maybe feel they're going to add testimony? You can always do it again. So we raise your right hand. You swear to tell the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth. I do. Very good. So we can start maybe the presentation. Um, if you could identify yourself, state your name for the record, and we'll get rolling. Sure. Good evening. My name is John Kamen, K-A-M-I-N. John, welcome. Uh, my address is 1806 Frick Building, Pittsburgh, PA, 15219. I am the lawyer for the partnership and also an owner of the property that's there tonight. So wearing <laughs> two hats. Uh, we have uh, submitted, provided to you uh, just a series of handouts. We'd ask uh, with the permission of Mr. Ratcher just to mark that as Exhibit A as part of the public hearing. Um, with, me to with me tonight is also Pat Cooper, who is our site civil engineer from Gateway Engineers, uh, who was sworn in earlier, and also Mike Haberman, who is our traffic engineer from the Gateway Engineers. If um, you could sign in, please, sir. Sign sure. the paper. Thank you. <clears throat> Thank you. So uh, we previously have provided an, an electronic copy of this, but I'm going to flip through the pages just because I know we're being broadcast and that way everybody <coughs> can sort of follow along. So um, as I stated before, uh, I'm an attorney, but also one of the owners of the site. Um, and we are proposing to go ahead and, and uh, put a Starbucks at the 4301 Northern Pike. Um, as many of you know, this site was the former McGinnis sister site, uh, and we purchased it, I want to say, almost two years ago. Uh, it took us about a year to get renovations done to the site. Um, the site was in very bad shape. Uh, there it was... Um, subsidence that was from the turnpike that had caused one of the walls on the other side to slide in. Uh, we had to get a structural engineer to redo that site. Um, the facade needed to be completely redone. The stormwater needed to be completely redone. The roof needed to be completely redone. The paving needed to be completely redone. Uh, and other than that, it was perfect. Um, so the, the purpose of our work was to go ahead and to essentially redevelop the site um, because we believe very much in, in the location, we believe in Monroeville, and believe that it was a good opportunity. Um, our investment, initial investment in renovating the site was close to a million bucks. Um, and right about the time that we were ready to go to market, uh, we were fortunate enough to have COVID hit us. Mm -hmm. um, throughout the time that we've had the site, just as a matter of background, um, we've had a, a lot of interest from various tenants that um, we think would, would be great, but for another site. Um, our goal was to upgrade the site so that we could bring a, a good quality Class A tenant to Monroeville because we think that's what it deserves. Um, and this Starbucks that we have is, is an important part of us repositioning the center to be able to bring the higher quality tenants um, to the site. So this first slide that I've shown you is the intersection Again, uh, I know everybody here is familiar with it, but for the uh, folks uh, who are watching from home, this is essentially 48 in Northern Pike. Excuse um, me, sir. Can you maybe put that in the center, and uh, our camera can come down and people sure. see it on TV? Is that there? It is. There you go. Perfect. Yep. Sorry about that. No, it's perfect. Thank you. Great. So this is essentially <coughs> the intersection. Our site is shown uh, up here. The purpose is really on this slide just to show you that right now. That's uh, not the slide. He must have it downstairs because his finger's not. That's he, fine. He must have a call. Yeah, I, I had sent this electronically. Oh, okay. Yeah. Oh. Now, now that's the actual picture now. If you want to move it. it Sorry about that. You can actually point out from yeah, here. Yeah, if, if you want to point to things, that'd be your better way. But if we want to have the better picture, uh, Jared downstairs can put the, okay. the one you emailed. Super. So, um now you can point. Now I can point. <laughs> Thank yes. you. So the, the site is right here where my finger is pointed. And this is an old picture. Part of the reason why I wanted to show you the site is this is an extremely complicated intersection, as I think everybody knows. Mm, very. Yes. And when we first purchased the site, there were essentially three uncontrolled access points to the site that allowed for traffic to come out onto Northern Pike 
Um, and then also there was sort of a nifty move that we observed. Oh, from the right, gas station? Right, which is people coming out, <laughs> looping around the corner of the gas station in order to avoid the light yep. and going s straight on uh, to the main drag there. So one of the first things that we did after we analyzed this and took uh, ownership of it was to work to essentially close that that site off that a, a little bit move. so that we could channel it all to one site and then we had a stormwater retention in the front. Great Pasture move. Monroeville driver's test channel. Yes. <laughs> um, this was a, uh, this next slide is a picture of, of what the site looked like before. I'm sure many of you probably remember it and drove by it a thousand times and never noticed it. Um, but this was not particularly an ideal situation. Um, and as we talked about, um, the entire facade needed to be redone. There was structural work that had to be done on the wall, which sits in this area that essentially acts as a support wall for part of the turnpike. Um, and then there was uh, a complete redo of the parking lot that needed to be done in terms of water, stormwater being sort of uncontrolled and um, the grades of the parking lot not being correct. This is a little bit of a close-up view in Again, the purpose of this slide is to show you the, essentially how the intersections uh, were to function. And in consultation with our traffic engineer, these first two intersections, again, we closed, and we wanted to focus on this third intersection as the point where we would have as our entrance point. So this is a more recent picture of the improvements that we've done, and as you can see, um, we have closed off the intersection and planted um, grass there. Uh, you can't quite see it from this picture, but there is a uh, detention uh, pond that just holds, or I should say a retention pond that slows down some of the stormwater, the sheet flow that was previously coming just sort of into the road and onto the um, adjacent property. Uh, one of the items you'll notice in the foreground is that there was no sidewalk here, or no real sidewalk here. Um, and one of the things that we're planning to do as part of this redevelopment is to go ahead and add the sidewalk in so um, there is sort of safe travel, and it's not just uh, for the sake of the sidewalk, but the grade, since this was previously a driveway, is really kind of screwed up. So um, it's cross-sloped, and it's, it's not necessarily appropriate. Good. 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 This is another view from the intersection. This is a, a little bit above where Old Haymaker Road is. Um, and again, the, the point of showing you is this is how it looks today. This is where we're channeling all the traffic in. Again, we've tried to, we put a new monument sign there uh, and we did that to again, make people know that this is the place where you go in as opposed to um, leading to some confusion amongst the motorists. This next slide shows the proposed Starbucks site highlighted in red. That area includes not just the building, it's a relatively small building, but also the associated parking with it and uh, where we're looking to go ahead and to put our drive through in. So this actually sits up in front of the site and it sits in front of the site so that there is really effective ingress and egress to the site without impacting the remainder of the center. Um, and I'll show you as we get to the site plan. So this next page shows what we're proposing as our uh, site plan for the site. Um, you will see as part of this that we have picked up additional parking uh, for the site. This area before was previously, I don't even know, gravel, sand, junk, mm -hmm. um, for lack of a better term. Um, and in order to make the number of parking spaces essentially stay the same as they were before the site, we have gone ahead and proposed to take that area back to landscape it and to put additional parking there so that we can keep nice. the parking mm -hmm. count for the center the same, even though we're adding the new Starbucks up front. Okay. You'll notice too that the way that this site plan has been uh, designed is that uh, the cars will come into the site and they can either come in through here or come in on the back road to go ahead and service the drive through. Uh, I know everybody here is familiar, I'm certainly familiar with the mess that is on William Penn Highway at the existing Starbucks in terms of backing up traffic and creating perhaps conflicts, not just with the tenants, but with the road. So we've designed this site 
and oriented the drive through in such a way so that all of the stacking that could potentially happen under the worst case scenario is completely controlled on our side. Um, this is not in the packet that we sent online, but in the packet today, Starbucks just approved these elevations. Um, so literally this afternoon. So I wanted to share those with you so you could see this is what the new site would look like. This is their newest prototype. Uh, there's been a lot of back and forth on materials, but we think it, it tastefully will fit into the center, what we've done, and also be a nice sort of marquee facility for us. And then the last slide that I just wanted to show you, sure. anticipating a question about stacking on site, um, is we had our engineer essentially prepare for us the worst case of worst case scenario in terms of what you would have on site in terms of vehicles that may be there should it be completely stacked. And if you count 28, 28. there are 28 <laughs> cars that uh -huh. could be backed up in the drive through and, and as any of you who have waited in the drive through know, if you see 28 cars, there's no way you're waiting. Right. Somebody's you know, not using their app. Right, <laughs> someone's not using their app. Right. You'll go inside, there'll be, there'll be ways to handle it. But I wanted to demonstrate for you that this situation is such that we've thoughtfully planned how we can kind of go ahead and manage it. So I know I've gone through a lot there, but we're asking for three separate uh, approvals tonight. One is for the site plan approval for us to construct approximately a, a 2,000 square foot building and associated site amenities. Uh, the second is requesting the subdivision, preliminary subdivision and final subdivision approval, and that is to consolidate that separate lot that is the gravel lot yeah. into one lot, and I, that's required under your ordinance to have all, all of that land use on one piece. Um, and the third piece is conditional use for, uh, as we've outlined under the um, ordinance number 1443, which allows essentially two principal structures to be on the same property. Will you have to upgrade any further the stormwater? So there will be some stormwater work that can be done. Pat, do you want to talk a little bit about uh, what we have to do there? Appreciate it. Yeah, we you want to introduce yourself, yeah, Pat. Patrick yeah. Cooper, Gateway Engineers, 100 McMorris Drive, Pittsburgh 15205. Yeah, working with the municipality, the planner, engineer, we've designed a, an underground detention system, oh, which will take not only the site we're working on, but the parking lot all the way up to almost to the building, pick up all of that drainage and detain it and uh, slow it down. It'll be a huge benefit to uh, Northern Pike, the Great. storm sewer system in Northern Pike. Now, before we uh, move forward, just uh, as more of a legal thing, Mr. Ratcher, so we, the, the public hearing portion is for just the conditional use. Should we move through our conditional use if there are any questions or testimony, or do you think it's appropriate for us to just kind of keep it open and, and go through everything? Yeah, I think it's better to keep it open and go through everything. So at this point, so really, just so everybody's clear, as far as the conditional use, the portion that, that we're talking about with that is just to permit two principal structures on one property. Correct. Uh, does council have any questions about that part of it? No, sir. No, sir. Mm -hmm. Okay. And from our staff point of view, uh, I'm curious, does staff have any uh, questions or comments about the two actual structures on one property because it does happen throughout the municipality it's, this would not be the first place this would be but it, it, we have them throughout so staff's okay with it very good okay so do you want to move forward with your uh, presentation or sure if you don't add? if you don't mind Please. Um, so one one of the big issues that we've encountered for the last five months um, has been going and trying to seek PennDOT approval um, and we understand and we know it when we bought it and uh, spent a lot of time in Monroeville that it is not the easiest of intersections for us to deal with. Um, there has been uh, a lot of, I would say, five months and at least three back and forth with PennDOT. Um, we've been working with your traffic engineer as well to try and come up with a plan that works best for the site. What's critical for us is to essentially have a left turn in to that site from um, Northern Pike. 
Um, the good news is that our traffic reports show that the only time that there is really a problem would be the left turn out of our site during the PM peak hour. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So one of the things that we have proposed uh, as part of our HOP that, and again, this will be issued by PennDOT, though of course the municipality does have the ability to comment and to add um, you know, questions and thoughts. One of the things that we have proposed as part of our use is that uh, left turns out from four to six would be restricted. Um, and we will helpful. post signage and we helpful. will do appropriate things to, to make sure that that doesn't happen. Um, we've also uh, studied, you know, essentially, uh, and we did counts uh, in October um, and then compared those counts to counts that had been previously done and, and we're very comfortable that that will work for the site. Um, the problem that we've sort of encountered, the reason why we've been tabling is I think PennDOT is looking for the municipality's uh, input as to whether or not um, how you feel about the site. And essentially, uh, we did have a call probably three weeks ago, four weeks ago, where um, Mr. Little and other members of your staff participated. And I think we decided that instead of us going back and forth and back and forth on this, uh, we would ask for essentially approval of the site subject to us getting our highway occupancy permit, which would be typical of any site that abuts the state road so that we can sort of move to the next piece of uh, getting our approvals and getting started. Um, one of the things that I just wanted to stress for you and for the record is that, uh, you know, I did say, you know, half joking when we came up that we've been contacted by a number of people who want land uses there, of, of, you know, daycares, churches, uh, those type auto body shops, um, those types of uses. And again, we have turned all of those down. We signed a new lease with a chiropractor, Dr. Sheeler, who's coming over, who's a terrific guy. We're thrilled about having him. Uh, we signed a, a new lease. I know, I know Dr. Sheeler very well. He's a good guy. Absolutely. He's a good guy. Yeah, he's welcome. There's a car. Yeah, oh, fine. okay. He's yeah. very much welcome yeah. in the community. No, that's good. Absolutely. Wow. There's one. <laughs> um, <laughs> go, to my web, go to my website for further information. <laughs> um, but no, we're thrilled about having Dr. We're thrilled about having Dr. Sheeler. Yeah, We've signed a new 10-year lease. With New China House, you're going to see some okay, improvements we'll there. Yes. Um, and Ten we minutes. are working on being able to upgrade the big space. Um, and for us to be able to do that, having a, a terrific marquee operation there like Starbucks will really help us to make sure that that center continues on the way up and, and that our investment in it was worthwhile. We believe it is, and, and we're very bullish on the site. I'm sorry, could, I, could you repeat again the, the time frame you were discussing, the no left turn? Yeah, so the, what, what our, and I can ask Mike Haberman, who's our traffic engineer, sure. to talk about it, but our, our issue is really on the peak, PM peak hour, which mm -hmm. is one hour, but it's essentially four to six. Okay. Um, and what uh, the restriction that we're proposing to solve that, because there's no problem in the AM, and, right. and as anybody knows, Starbucks is primarily AM driven. Um, but what we propose to that uh, is that we restrict all left turns out, and that's not just Starbucks, that's from the entire site, uh, during 4 to 6 in the p.m. hour. Can I ask, Mr. Ugas, is that enforceable um, from the police, because the signage, because they've department. agreed to it and we would install it, right? That would be enforceable? Maybe police matter. Yeah, I know, but... Where's the police chief? <laughs> no. <laughs> So to that point, I, I know that a lot of our signs, right. unless we have an ordinance written for I them. Can touch on it. So, yeah, please so the do. Per, the permit that if you could, like, say your sorry, yeah, no problem. I think yeah, Pat signed me in. Sign yeah. in uh, Michael it. Haberman, okay. uh, Gateway Engineers, Thank 100 you. McMorris uh, Drive, Pittsburgh, 15205. Thank okay. You. Um, the permit that would be issued ultimately that would have a restriction for no left turn from four to six would have uh, signs posted as you exit the driveway as well as on the opposite side of, of Northern Pikes so near right, far left, so anyone coming out. Well, I think what Mrs. Gators is trying to get at is I think, Mr. Higgins, with a traffic and engineering study, that would make the signs enforceable, would it not? Yeah. Yeah. And that was going to be my next statement. Those are, those are regulatory signs. Okay, good. So the no left turns are regulatory, which are enforceable. My back by question to that is, oh. is, would it be better to just say no left turn? No, no, because that restricts well, you an awful lot of traffic. Well, you think people are going to watch and say, oh, I can make a Wait a minute, wait a minute. There are four, four other businesses in that area. One of them have to be a Domino's Pizza. Yeah. No. What are you going to tell them when they can't go out down Northern Pike at four or the six? Yes. 
They can go up and turn around. Yes. But, I, but I appreciate that you've actually looked at that problem because we do know that it can be an issue and that you're willing to address it, at least for a certain timeline, right. well, um, which is the heaviest traffic. And, and to pick up on what Steve was saying, which is kind of where I wanted to follow yeah. on too, so, and that's okay with, her, with your other tenants. Yeah, for, from Pen, PennDOT's perspective, and again, PennDOT controls it, that's what they're saying sure. the way that it needs to be. And, mm -hmm. you know, th this site has existed this way for 50 plus years. Mm -hmm. um, and the, the question that ar arises from that is, you know, we have certain rights and those, the, the properties have certain rights, but in order to, nobody ever really looked at what is this, the safest way to do mm -hmm. it. So. Right. In terms of overall safety, if this is what our engineer and this is what PennDOT is saying, then while it may be an inconvenience on Domino's, I think that we have to defer to what the safety recommendations are. Okay. And for the Thank record, you. my contention was that the way that the driveway operates and will operate is a function of how the traffic signal operates and the way that it's phased. Um, and that making a left turn out of there, really at any time, actually isn't that difficult because of the way that the signal operates. So it's split phase, and what I mean by that is one side of Northern Pike mm -hmm. has a green light all by itself, everybody yes. else is yeah. stopped. Yes. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Well, yes. when, the, when that side of Northern Pike goes, um, and we our counts were video, we've, we've been out there, we've recorded it, watched it. Um, when, that site, when that side of Northern Pike goes green, it, it empties out. Yes. And for the next minute to a minute and a half, the, the traffic is not backed up blocking the driveway, and there's hardly any traffic there, really. You're standing there going, oh, boy, everybody could be turning left in here now, yes. and everybody could be turning left out of here now. Well, that signal continues to cycle through, so every two minutes you're going to that same phenomena. So our contention was that no matter what time of day, when you leave Starbucks, which has an average uh, service time of four minutes in their drive through so you don't have this platoon of traffic, six, seven cars at one, at one time trying to get out. They're essentially spaced. They're spaced similar to how that signal operates. Um, and also, um, the traffic itself is a very low percentage of it is actually destined or wants to make a left on a northern pike. Majority of it is, is to and from uh, 48 north yes. and south. Yes. So it's a very low number, which is why we were saying if that's giving everybody heartburn, we would recommend restricting it during that time to, to satisfy that concern. But our contention was let's not do it up front and let's evaluate it after it opens. And if it's a problem, implement it. Well, let's do the reverse. So, Northern Pike going westbound empties Donuts. out. So now Northern Donuts. Pike <coughs> eastbound gets the green, and traffic starts yep. stacking. Yep. So the eastbound good. traffic wants to make a left into there, mm -hmm. but traffic already stacked up from the red light. So it's actually the opposite the way that it's phased. Mm -hmm. So the eastbound side goes first. The eastbound goes first. Correct. I, I wasn't. I couldn't remember. Yeah, and 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 the. That is the one move that was challenging, I think, about the way that it operates because you do have two lanes that come through from the eastbound side. One lane is through and left. Mm -hmm. One lane is through and right. Mm -hmm. And the way that the volumes are split, um, we looked at it. We looked at, hey, can we reconfigure this or change the configurations? But the volumes are so even that we couldn't push everything, to, all the throughs to one lane or the other. Um, but they're staggered because there's so many left and right turns as well. So when you have the two lanes of traffic coming through, you don't have the phenomena where you have four or five vehicles all next to each other and both lanes going through because you have mm -hmm. lefts and rights that are peeling off all through it. And since there's two lanes on the other side, we were comfortable with the distance to 48 that as you're coming up there, if, you, if you're if you going to turn left and it happens to be that the driveway's blocked, which 70, over 70% 70 of the time it isn't, if it is blocked, then you have the other lane um, and you have the ability, if you had to wait for 10 seconds or to change lanes you can or for someone to let them in to continue on. Right, so just if you look do. at what I'm, what Mike sh was just talking about here, which is the, the intersection, there is that two lane configuration and mm -hmm. uh, we worked very hard with, in terms of setting up the, the profile within the program to figure out how you can do it. But the reality is, and, and again, we took video counts to document what was actually there. The reality is if somebody's in that lane and waiting to make the turn, there's ample time for somebody to switch lanes and, and to go over because of the way that it's, the right-of-way staggered. There, there, is, there, is, there is no question, and I've said all along that it, that it certainly isn't ideal, but my comfort level is in the fact that there are two lanes there. If 
if, if there were only one lane on Northern Pike going past the site, we'd be in with trouble. The yeah. kinds of kinds of volumes and things we're we'd talking be in about, yeah. then I, yeah. I would have a concern. I would say, we well, somehow you've got to get a, a, another lane in here for, for the left turns in. Let, um, let me ask you a question. Sure. Uh, going east on Northern Pike, you cross 48. Mm -hmm. The left lane, uh, in my opinion, should be left turn only. And to do that, you would have to put a safety island right at the beginning so people don't run up through there. So when somebody's stopping for a left turn lane, the other lane on the right would be a through lane. The other problem is when people come out of old Haymaker Road, how do you keep them from going straight across the highway like they do now? You don't. And if it's Starbucks, it, it's going to be tough unless you put some kind of a barrier uh, up across the uh, lane. What? Mr. Williams, isn't there a sign, no left turn coming There up? is. There is. People don't I know, I know. When, I know. when they want their coffee, they're well, going you, straight you, you through. Know, you know I know that area like the back of my hand. Like I said, that's, that's what I'm saying. So, so well, would you be willing to put a safety I mean, island there? Right. And don't want one. No. Well, and, it, and it's the same as the McDonald's property. And, I mean, this property is operated is operating better now than it did before with the changes that have been made, I, I feel, yeah. anyway, because you've now limited that little – fun run from the gas station up and down and right. people coming in and I think most people in Monroe will say that they've either stopped and let somebody go into that plaza or let stop let somebody come out of that plaza right. so I think this works a ton better well, that's my so, personal opinion so Mr. Kamen and uh, Mr. Haberman so uh, major presentation and certainly hang tight we'll, we'll add more we'll, you'll be able to add more uh, testimony and more discussion certainly I think we're going to be talking about this for a little bit sure um, but if we could have our staff uh, come up we have our traffic engineer Darren Myers um, and anyone else that wants to come up with them because I'm curious and I would like for the, for the public and also for council to maybe go over what maybe, maybe PennDOT's concerns um, and we talked about how uh, Mr. Kamen mentioned how there was definitely back and forth um, with PennDOT and also certainly uh, Mr. Myers as far as uh, your take on the situation, and uh, Mr. Wilden is, is here as well. Darren Meyer with HRG, Monroe, Monroeville Traffic Engineer Representative, <laughs> 200 West Kensinger Drive, Cranberry Township. Thank you. Mr. Meyer. Mr. Wilden, please. Paul Wilden, Zoning Officer from Monroeville. What's your address? Thank you both. So however you want to break it down, Darren, if you want to maybe start with what PennDOT said or if you want to get into what your take or how, however you want to do it. I guess, um, first off, I don't know if you can show, this is just another graphical representation <laughs> similar to what we were looking at. It just has some illustrations on it that maybe I can point to. While I will agree that the site plan that they have renovated over the years, consolidating driveways, has made the existing site probably as safe as it can be, uh, do still have concerns with the additional traffic for the proposed Starbucks. Uh, one key concern is just today with Mossside Boulevard and Northern Pike, as most of you would know, that, that intersection is over capacity now. So anytime there's any disruption in traffic with emergency vehicle or something like that there's the potential to extend multiple cycles with the queuing um, so one of the key concerns we have is with the left turns into the site there's approximately 160 feet between the existing driveway and the stop bar along westbound northern pike which would also be allow for approximately seven cars to queue in that leftmost uh, through lane. Um, while the analysis that uh, we've gone through some iterations and review does currently show that the queue, the 95th percentile queue will not exceed that, uh, I guess we would just issue some caution there and that the volumes were counted during COVID. There was a COVID adjustment for the volumes. We believe it to be fairly applicable, but it's just so close that we still have concerns that that could queue into the intersection. You have, I'm sorry, when were those counts taken? Do you have, um, do you have a rough date? October of 2020. O the, so October of 2020. Okay, Correct. thank you. And then um, PennDOT has, uh, Pen has issued some methodologies on... Yeah, Ed, I'm sorry. Just get to the microphone for yeah. you. Uh, PennDOT has issued no, uh, different methodologies for adjusting traffic volumes collected during COVID to get it to pre-COVID volumes. 
Um, so there's different uh, counts that are available that, they, that they've collected over the years in different locations. There's also available counts um, in nearby locations that, that they, they're able to provide to us. So we're able to find data that was pre-COVID to compare to similar data that was during COVID to determine how much the percentage-wise of volumes have gone down because of COVID. In this particular case, it was between 20, 20 and 25 percent lower. So the counts we did in October, we, we increased them by that amount. Oh, okay. So Thank our analyses you. are not the actual October counts, but COVID adjusted. Great. Oh. Thank you. Sorry, Mr. Meyer. Please. Yeah, fair enough. <laughs> Just noting that there is, while engineering judgment was made and we believe that it was accurate representation, there is still potential to go 10, 15 percent either way, and we're so close, just want to express that concern. I guess where we left off with the call with PennDOT, um, I believe Gateway was going to explore the option of potentially, and Mike alluded to it, making an exclusive left turn lane and a shared right th through right, or vice versa, an exclusive right and a shared left through. We have yet to see that analysis, but that is one of the comments in PennDOT's last letter that to allow a left in, their recommendation was to have uh, some sort of designated left turn lane for the site. So that would potentially involve restriping one of the existing through lanes. And we have not yet seen that concept plan or the analysis to support that. So that would be from the just to reiterate the phasing, and this is kind of color codes, you know, the, the first, let's start with the left turns from 48 is one phase, northbound and southbound. Mm -hmm. Then you have the main line route 48, throughs and rights. Then you have the op opposite eastbound northern pike, and then the westbound northern pike. So you have four phases. Now, as discussed earlier, you have the westbound northern pike clears out so theoretically if you have uh, eastbound next yes you would have the ability likely to make those left turns yeah. Yeah. but however yeah. you have that q building that whenever the left turns from 48 come across the intersection there's more potential for that uh, driveway to be blocked along northern pike and the potential for this to queue back into 48. so they're suggesting or pendot suggested I me mean, as part of my following a left turn lane dedicated left turn lane it could be a uh, but east i'm sorry east of from the intersection of 48 eastbound so essentially point, point again i'm sorry What's this? instead of having two through lanes yes one of these would become a through lane and one an exclusive turn lane that there was supposed to be some analysis done to determine which way that turn lane would be. So only one lane across. So that way at any time you'd have either the southbound left, the eastbound through, or northbound right. It's only one lane entering Northern Pike. So this lane, today it's two shared lanes. This would become an exclusive left turn lane that then could be restriped going further east or designated as left turn only and not a through lane. You're waiting for PennDOT's analysis of that? I think the next step was... Me, can I wait, jump wait. back up? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so this isn't something, this was something that uh, I, I thought might be a good idea back when we started talking about the project. And I know we can't see it all on here, but Northern Pike, you know, to the east of 48 and of this site is um, essentially two lanes in each direction and lined with driveways on both sides. So um, we thought, well, maybe there's an opportunity to, and then, and then when you get, before you get to the, over, uh, the overpass bridge, the curb lane ends and turns down to, to one of the old Westinghouse buildings. It's a no outlet. Next year, can So essentially the through traffic, you know, there's only one lane. Once you get through this business district, there's only one lane. Yes. So is, is there really a need for two lanes all the way through here? So we thought, well, if you, could, if you could restripe this and have a left turn lane into this particular site, and then as you continue east, that left eastbound lane could become a two-way shared center left turn lane to you know resolve some of all those issues with all of the accesses that are along there totally would be on board with doing something like that the issue is um, and the reason we haven't submitted any analysis is because when I take away one of these through lanes on the eastbound side of Northern Pike it blows the whole intersection up 
the volumes that are there on that eastbound mm -hmm. approach. Um, if I try to put all of the throughs into either the right lane or the left lane mm -hmm. mixed with the other traffic, then the queuing that's on that eastbound side that's already bad, mm -hmm. like I can't it drag my link and my model far enough yeah, to, it to, work, to get so. it. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? So it was a function of, and what I said to PennDOT is, because I, I spoke to them about it, I said, I've, I've never submitted a traffic study where my proposed mitigation made it worse. You know what I mean? I'm yeah. usually trying to solve a problem. Um, so while I might solve the, the concern that, that, that Darren has and that Pendon has with the access, I'm going to create a huge problem at the signal, which is already over capacity. So my justification was describing through engineering judgment and, and, and observation and what I can get out of the models, how this thing operates, and that it is my opinion that I can get a permit for this and that, it, that, those, that those turns aren't going to cause a problem based on historical analysis. We, we looked at crash data from you know, the last five years, McGinnis Sisters is open. There was, there's, I mean, there was nothing there. Um, and that was when they had three driveways essentially into and out of Northern yeah. Pike. You know, a combination of all those things, I have concluded that, that it can handle this. Um, and I believe that I can get, that I, that, that I can get a permit from PennDOT if, if the municipality approves this plan. Now, will it have restricted left turns out during four to six? Potentially. I still don't think it's necessary, but, but that may be something they require. Um, and, and just two things I would want to add. Um, so we did ask Mike to look at this early on, and it would totally benefit our site, but it would totally hurt the rest of Monroeville, which is why we, we punted on it, right? The, the second thing is, is that what we're asking for is, is Monroeville's approval subject to us getting an HOP from PennDOT. So we, we're at sort of a, a weird place with PennDOT where they heard some negative things uh, from the municipality and heard that perhaps the development wasn't wanted at all. And that puts us in a very different conversation than if I'm just figuring out from an engineering way how to get my HOP, because we can figure that out. Right. Yeah, and if we could, let's circle back on this. Uh, so, Darren, we'll go back to you, because, yeah, we, we do want to get into the record for the public and for mm -hmm. council sure. what some of these concerns are from our traffic engineer, from our staff, and certainly from PennDOT as well. Um, but I, I, I do... I do like the uh, idea of, of, you know, talking about, okay, let's really listen to what PennDOT has to say with all of this. You know, that's what we all try to do. Um, but please, yeah, Mr. Meyer, please. I guess I would close by building off the point that Mike kind of made there with him looking at the analysis of making this only one through lane. If this does back up and this becomes a de facto left turn lane because cars have to queue to wait to turn into the Starbucks because of... I just put the block of the driveway. Northern Pike one lane. There's no way. Have no. you ever driven yeah. up there past Gateway Girl at rush hour no. time? Yes. I mean, you need, you need to stop and get a sandwich just to make it through. Essentially, that may be what the traffic becomes if the queuing to turn the driveway is in effect. If, they don't, if you don't have bo uh, both those lanes for those people to go this way and this way if, when it's queued. The tools we have for analysis aren't perfect. That's the, kind of the... Um, illustration of what may happen if this driveway is blocked too much of the time you don't have the two through lanes on the east side so uh, the the traffic light I know along uh, 22 and most of 22 we have smart signals um, I don't believe that signal is one of those right now adaptive. no adaptive no it's, no, it's not it's not it's not the, the last thing that was done, SPC did a uh, sorry, did you time. <laughs> SPC did a study, I think, in 2012 or 2013, where they right updated the timings along this corridor. So if there's time of day coordination, but it's not adaptive like the newer systems that they're putting in. The, 22. Yeah, yeah. That, that's really that's real time adaptive. And the adaptive would help, but it just comes down to at some point there's just not enough pavement yeah. for the number of cars that want to get through that intersection. Uh, are, there, uh, are there other major concerns by PennDOT from the, the opinions that you've received from PennDOT at this point? Mr. Meyer? I think that one right other, now, like, are, the only other major or concern is just enforcement of the no left out during the PMP. That would, that would fall on the municipality. Which is what I brought up. Okay. To enforce. Yeah. Yeah. From my standpoint, it's not atypical. I mean, you can put the restriction in place and, and if, if people make an Ill illegal left turn, then you either enforce it or you don't enforce it. And if it becomes problematic, you enforce it more. If it's not problematic, you turn a blind eye to it. We have a good it. police department, though. Yeah, know what to yeah. do. Yeah. <laughs> uh, 
but there are some other treatments that we would do here and that we've done in other places with, you know, pavement markings and, you know, the standard stick of do not block driveway sign up. Yes. Nobody reads them and everybody ignores them. But there's some new pavement it's marking treatments that have been done um, and that we've done in areas like this where you can actually put some wording, you know, do not block and have a little bit of a hatching in there that's visual to a driver as opposed to a sign on the side of the road that they don't see. Um, and when Darren talked about the analysis program, there are certainly limitations to it. Um, they're, they're the best tools that we have to do these analyses. But when we try to model something like this, that's not really what these programs are meant to model, you know, driveways with multiple lanes and it next to an intersection. You model it, and then you're required to put different parameters in there. And one of them is um, you either require it to block the driveway all the time, the queues, or you say don't block the driveway. There's nothing in there that says have the queues block the driveway 10% of the time, which when we observe it, you know, 10 to 15% of the time when the queue actually backs beyond this driveway, traffic actually leaves a gap for people to turn in here. You can't model that. So we're left with saying block it all the time, and then we get results that say, well, nobody can get in and the queues are bad. But engineering judgment and observation-wise, I'm saying that's not necessarily accurate when you consider all of these other factors. Okay. Uh, Mr. Meyer, from PennDOT's comments, is there anything that PennDOT commented on that needs to be addressed that maybe is impossible to address or cannot be addressed? I think that the key is their fourth comment here about the left turn lane that they would want to see that striped as an exclusive left turn lane and if Mr. Haberman is saying that the analysis shows that doesn't work, that still is something that's, I guess, open and not worked out at this point. And then how many comments, what do you see that fourth comment, how many comments did PennDOT give on this? There were four comments, and they were reiterating some of the comments okay. that we had in the municipal letter. There, there are originally more comments. They whittled them down to, to four remaining comments. Okay. And uh, you, is there anything additionally that, to what PennDOT is, other than what you just presented, is there anything additionally that, any comments that you have from your firm's standpoint? No, I believe that's the key concerns, is the queuing and the potential for, for blocking, you know, this driveway blocking and this queuing back to the intersection. And then again, the left's out is a potential safety concern, but that's existed for years, so it's, it's just going to have more vehicles making that maneuver now. Okay. Council, any questions at this time for our staff? Yeah, I have a question. Mr. Williams. Uh, nobody's addressing the safety island at the beginning of that left turn lane. That's sort of because if you don't put a safety on there, pe people will ignore the whole thing. Safety. That, that's, that's, sort, that's sort of been where, addressed. Mr. Williams, where are you? I'm sorry. I'm talking about uh, going eastbound, yeah. right at the beginning of what you're yeah. proposing, a left turn lane into Starbucks. How can you put that up if you have two? One lane. Be only one lane going east, and they're going to close the other lane off, make left turn only dedicated, and a safety on there is the only way to keep people from running through there. We're talking about not doing yeah. that. Agreed, but that's the analysis hasn't shown that that will work yet, so that's still the open issue. Is well, how do we run over the curb? Well, th the issue with that is if, if that one lane gets blocked off and turned into a turning lane, only a turning lane, it backs up Northern Pike. Yes. Going yeah. towards Pitt yeah. Karen Road. Yeah. Yep. So th that's a sort of uh, still in discussion. Well, that's not a straight through lane, anyways. It'll be one straight through lane. Once you get across 48, it'll be a dedicated straight turn lane in a dedicated left turn lane. Only way to keep people from using both lanes is a safety island there to block them from running up both lanes. And, and what the engineering is showing is if you remove both, one of the, one of the two straight through yeah. lanes, it, it causes a backup on Northern Pike. Yes. Yeah. Well, wouldn't that be PennDOT's call based on additional analysis? Yeah. It's yes. one of their outstanding comments. Yeah. yeah. So ultimately they're gonna dictate whether they want something like that on their road or not. Uh, it was sort of mentioned that I think PennDOT is maybe looking for some direction from Monroeville, whether or not we're in favor of helping or not doing that. Okay. It sounds like, Paul, we were talking about overall, if I heard both, it, I want to see if I heard both folks say the same thing. If we did something with the restriction going eastbound in the left turn lane, there's not enough pavement or size that would still, it would create backup further west down Northern Pike mm -hmm. towards Pitt Cairn Road. Correct. Six and one half, a dozen the other, doesn't matter with it or without it. We just 
this is the amount of payment we have. Right. We're not right. looking at expanding the payment. Okay. We're so, looking at adding traffic. So that, so that <laughs> part is going to make it, it worse. It is what it is. Okay, yeah. great. I mean, that, and, and I'm hearing both, both firms concur with that reality. It's not a problem necessarily. It's a reality. And, and if you close off one of the, one of the through lanes, mm -hmm. you're going to have that problem yeah, bad all the time. Yeah. Whereas if you leave them both the way they are now, it might be an intermittent problem, but it wouldn't be every right. Every correct, and, and it sounds like to, to do that. The only thing was further explanation on the adaptive technology, which is above this discussion right now. Yes, from that too. But you've based everything on the existing uh, traffic signal technology uh, that applies to that intersection. Okay, and it's up in the air. You have no comment at this time. Either of you did not make any comment regarding adaptive technology. Is that correct? Correct. Adaptive okay. just going to reallocate the time for the payment that's there. So it, it, still, from a level of service standpoint, it's not going to show us <laughs> much difference. Understood. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Thank you. I just want to okay. clarify that too. So we, we have a sense of agreement on number one, how much real estate we have to work with. That's not going to change. And two, the, the traffic signal technology is taken into this consideration. So we, we got pretty close. If I heard everyone based upon the studies and the adapting for the traffic volume based on COVID, we're in good shape. I mean, we have a pretty close number, again, allowing for some, you know, we don't know I mean, the future to, to change that too, but we have taken that into consideration. Yes, we've taken that into consideration. Okay. I guess we're just kind of at different ends of the spectrum of, sure. he's saying it's going to work all the time and I'm, I'm just doing some caution. No, no, I mean, that's that I, I mean, we don't know. I don't think future. he said all the time. Yeah. yeah. He said <laughs> for the most part. Yeah, okay. I think everybody's so, I mean, kind I, of I understand that. Most of the time. Both sides. Yeah. It, right. That's, yeah, that's our problem. Thank you for both yeah. sides. Yeah. Because yeah. okay. I will say, like, I, I go through this intersection a couple times a day. Mm -hmm. uh, and I was here over the weekend. Mm -hmm. Now, down at Next Tier, we had a, we had a busy mm -hmm. weekend down there with the vaccines. Mm -hmm. And I happened to be sitting here to make a left. And, and this Q lane mm -hmm. was, was filled. Mm -hmm. The light cycled. It went green, yellow, red. When it turned red, there were still three or four cars in the intersection because it had backed up. Mm -hmm. Obviously, that was a, a high traffic well, They had 6,000 vaccines available. I don't think 6,000 people are going for coffee at once. <laughs> well, I'm, I'm just saying some, <laughs> days, some days and times are going to be a big problem. I mean, I'm so sure as a business owner, you would hope that they, you'd get 6,000 at once, but, but the, I don't think those are the times everybody's going to remember. Yeah. That intersection is terrible. I got stuck there. Somebody cut me off. And I think every one of us has probably stopped our car and let someone turn in, uh, you know, yeah. it is what it is. We're all used to kind of that. And I think it's better now than it ever was. Yep. So. I agree with that. Yeah. So at this point, uh, count, or, uh, council, uh, any other questions for staff at this point? I do not. Any other questions for the applicants, for the, for the applicant, the engineer, the, the traffic engineer from the applicant? I have a comment. Please. Like I said, since I've driven that area yeah. most of my life here in Monroeville, also being a mailman in the area for 33 years, I know the situation that you're talking about. If you get people to stop at that it inlet for there, you got it made. Mm -hmm. Because Northern Pike is known for a cut through from God knows where it starts all the way down to the other end of 22, and that's part of the problem. They even come off 22 up here at 48, come down this way, then cut through Northern Pike because of all the traffic that's down here. I've seen the traffic back up all the way down to Pitcairn Road. I've seen where people just sat there at the stop signs waiting for Northern Pike to move. Mm -hmm. uh, like I said, the, the cycle there at times, at given times, like you said, the, you know, the four to six, let's call it, is horrendous. And again, uh, you know, a lot of people, like some people says, yes, we're used to letting people in and out there. But then there are some people that aren't. And if you get those two lanes coming, what would be westbound, I guess it would be down Northern Pike, they want to get that light and make that right turn on red. Somebody's going to cut through there. This guy here is going to allow somebody through. Bam, accident. As much as I want a Starbucks there, I mean, I hope we get this through because I'd like to see it there. But then we got to solve the traffic problem. So is there anything else from a staff perspective that uh, you want to add? And then not even traffic, but uh, from a staff perspective, Mr. Wielden, about and let's see if we could open it up just for the whole the site, stormwater. The stormwater's an improvement. There's nothing there now. Uh, so they're, in, they're uh, proposing an underground tank, which is, which is going to help uh, pick Karen Road and uh, Dirty Camp Run. Oh, that uh, needs it. The, uh, the conditional use for the two buildings on one property, that's not uncommon either. And then, uh, of course, the site plan. Uh, so the big issue here was the, was the traffic, the left turns in and out. 
for the corporation yeah. improvement in parking in the site because of the gravel lot that's... Yeah, that's they, they're doing a subdivision to, uh, to consolidate that lot in to, make it the, to expand their parking. It's been improved. It's been, it'll be improved. Mm -hmm. okay. That's what I thought I, I took from the, the drawings. Yep. Okay. Yeah. That's all I need. Thank you. And the sidewalk that was mentioned, that is in the that is in the site plan. That shows up on a site plan, correct. Plan. Yeah. Uh, does the applicant have anything else to add? I think the the only thing I wanted to add is that um, Mr. Wielden uh, has been terrific to work with. We really appreciate it. Um, it's been you know Difficult to get anything done over the last year, but uh, Mr. Wheeldon has been incredibly responsive. He's been great. Thank you for, Thank you for that. that. Yes. Thank you. And uh, is there anyone from the public that would like to add testimony about this matter after hearing all of this? <laughs> yeah. Sir, if you could just uh, state your name for the record. Bob Stevenson. Welcome, Bob. Thank you. And I know you were already sworn in earlier, so you're good to go. All right. Uh, hello, uh, I'm currently chairman of the uh, Planning Commission. This project came through the Planning Commission. We reviewed it extensively. It met all the requirements of the Planning Commission and we sent it to you for approval. The Planning Commission has no power over traffic. I want that clear for the public to know. We had no dealings with that. We don't want to deal with it. it it's not under our power to deal with it. And that's why we sent it to you unanimously, I'm sorry, unanimously approved by the Planning Commission. And like the gentleman that was here before and left, uh, I'm also running for uh, <laughs> <laughs> Ron in. Harvey's yeah, seat, plug. so <laughs> thank you. Thank you, Mr. Stevenson. And yeah, that is an important point rest. to bring up. I really appreciate that because, yes, all three of these items, the Planning Commission recommends approval and sometimes people don't fully understand what that fully means. So yes, that was with, without consideration of traffic. Right. So thank you for clarifying that. Uh, anyone else in the public would like to add testimony? Now would be your time. And sir, you will uh, be signed in. Thank you. And you will state your name for the record and, and I believe I'll have to swear you in. Yes, you will. Don't swear at me. <laughs> first time. <laughs> I know. Steer for the record, please. My name is Robert Serafini. I live in Mon I live in Monroeville. Thank you, sir. Do you swear to tell the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth? Nothing but, yes, sir. Thank you. I live off Northern Pike, and I think this, putting the star back here, is a really bad idea. Because that traffic there was bad when McGinnis was there, and it's going to even be worse because this is going to be in and out traffic all day. And I just want to voice my opinion. This is a bad idea. Thank you, sir. Thank you, Robert. And before we do close the, uh, the public hearing, is there anyone else from the public that would like to add testimony? And same thing, sir, if you could sign in, please. And then once you do, we'll uh, get you sworn in. Dan Gerhardt, 319 St. Moritz Drive. Dan. Uh, just you, comment. If you um, can just raise your right hand right. real quick. If you swear to tell the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth. I do. Thank you. Um, with this being in my area where I live and Steve being my councilman, I agree with Steve. I'd love to see the Starbucks here. Yeah. Um, I've noticed over the years, watching many of council meetings, watching all these businesses coming to Moreauville, a lot of the times, <coughs> a lot of people want to look at all the negatives instead of positives. It's society. I feel we need to learn to adapt <laughs> to businesses and situations coming into our area to, to keep turning businesses away because we don't want to adapt is not very financially stable for Monroeville. I believe that this Starbucks in this area not only will, it's a beautiful building, 
But like the owner said, it's, it's a marquee place to bring even more businesses into McGinnis Sisters that's sitting there empty now, where we could be making more money if we can get businesses in there. So I think a lot of people need to start looking at more positives. And, and yes, the, the traffic probably will be difficult, but where in this world anymore is traffic not difficult? And we True. always adjust and adapt. In that area, I drive through that area all the time. Yes, there's times of the day where I sit there and I'm like, son of a bee, I can't stand this intersection. <laughs> and, but then 10 minutes later, I'm a happy camper. You know, it, it's just one of them things where I love the what, what they did to the site now. I've seen a lot less crashes there since there's only the one entrance. Um, when you had the three entrances, I swear every day I drove up there, four ambulances were sitting in front of McGinnis Sisters because somebody either drove up onto the sidewalk well, one of these sidewalk that was there, or you had three people trying to come out of one area and boom, boom, boom. Um, I've even seen a car flipped over on its hood there. But I haven't seen barely any of that since they restricted it to one entrance. So is traffic going to back up? Absolutely, it's going to back up. But everybody learns to adjust to it. So. I think we need to learn to adjust to more of these situations so we can attract more businesses rather than scare businesses away from Monroeville. Thank you. Thanks, Dan. Thank you. Thank you too. Here, here. Mr. Mayor. Yes, Mr. Williams. Do we absolutely know what the traffic patterns are going to be at this point? Not exactly, because from what I'm understanding, we would. We don't have a final decision from PennDOT. That's correct. And well, some of that is going to depend on how this council proceeds. Well, at this point, I would make a motion to table until we know absolutely what the traffic pattern is going to be. And that would be for 20-6ST, 20-4SUB, and 20-4C. Until we know absolutely what the traffic pattern is going to be, I, I'm, I'm not comfortable with the passing anything. Okay. Mr. Williams making a motion to table. Mm -hmm. Is there a second? No. Yeah. Seeing none, that motion dies. Council, any other questions or comments regarding this? Anyone from the public? Any other testimony like to be added? So we're going to close the. Uh, could I, I would seek a motion to close the public hearing? Motion. So, Second. Motion is second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? The public hearing is, is closed. Now, Council, we have three items uh, three items in front of you here. Good one, Paul. Uh, I'm going to we'll start with the conditional use. Num item number three, 20-4-C. Is there a motion to act on this in any way? Motion to approve. Aye. Motion and a second to approve. Any comments or discussion, Council? Now, what was mentioned from the developer, and uh, I think primarily the developer brought it up as far as this being uh, dependent on the final highway occupancy permit from PennDOT. Uh, let's make sure that this Council, is that something the Council wants to consider? Well, that's in the record, absolutely. Yeah, I, so, sure. I mean, I think that it's important to make sure that that right. we are the, your, your motion and the second is to approve it with, and we'll go through all these correct. with the contingent on the, the highway occupancy permit. Correct. From Penn. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And the, the, the developer has to get the highway yes. occupancy permit or, or can't they do can't do anything, anything anyway. Right. So I so. think that so was kind of is clear on that yes. part of it. Yes. Mm -hmm. Very yeah, good. We're good. So we have a motion and a second to approve the conditional use 20-4-C. Roll call, please. Mrs. Gators? Aye. Mr. Poach? Aye. Mr. Harvey? Aye. Mr. Wolfram? Aye. Mr. Ursinko? Aye. Mr. Williams? No. The ayes have it. We're going backwards, actually, Council. The second no, Mr. item. Mr. Wilson. Okay. Mr. Wilson's gone. Mr. Yeah. Wilson had, had to leave the meeting. He, he notified me. Okay. About thank it. you. 
Second item, item number two, 20-4-SUB. This is for the final subdivision approval to consolidate two tax parcels. Is motion there to approve. Second. There's a motion to second to approve. That's a good thing. Any other comments or questions, Council? Roll call, please. Mr. Williams? No. Mr. Arsenko? Aye. Mr. Wolfram? Aye. Mr. Harvey? Aye. Mr. Poach? Aye. Mr. Skatos? Aye. The ayes have it. And finally, item number one, actually, 20-6-ST. This is for the site plan approval. Motion to approve. Second. Motion second to approve. Comments or questions? Roll call, please. Mrs. Gatos? Aye. Mr. Poach? Aye. Mr. Harvey? Aye. Mr. Wolfram? Aye. Mr. Rosenko? Aye. Mr. Williams? No. The ayes have it. <coughs> Good luck with your project, gentlemen. Thank you, gentlemen. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. You want, Appreciate it. Uh, Thank you. Mayor, can we get a break, please? Yes. Uh, we're just going to ask for a, a five minute recess for our sonographer and everybody <laughs> to get a little break here. We'll be back in five minutes.
This meeting is back out of recess. It is approximately 8.52 p.m. Eastern. Uh, Council, we're moving over to our new business. We have two items this evening. Mr. Little, please. Yeah, the uh, new business is 21-1-ST uh, Chase Bank. Applicant is requesting site plan approval to construct 3,293 square foot bank and associated site amenities. The property is 0.64 acres, located at 4163 William Penn Highway, tax parcel 856E261 in the C2 Business Commercial District. Planning Commission recommends approval. Did anybody hear any of that? <laughs> I did. <laughs> Walked up to the very end. <coughs> yeah, 21 dash. Is this in the plaza? 1 dash ST the Chase Bank. Uh, the applicant is here, representative of the applicant. Oh, I see that's it. Hi. Welcome. If you, uh, I don't know if you signed in. I did early. sign in. And then once you get settled there, uh, she can orient. You can state your name on the record and get us all oriented. Oh, and if you're comfortable with uh, removing your mask just so we can hear you, if you're comfortable with that. I can do that. <laughs> now I know. Whew, I can breathe. Welcome. Welcome. Hi. Thank you. Good evening. My name is Erin Goglin. I'm a, a project manager at Bowler Engineering here in Pittsburgh. I'm here tonight on behalf of J.P. Morgan Chase Bank to present their plan for site approval. Um, the site is located at 4163 William Penn Highway. Um, it's the site, it's the old Willie's store. Um, Chase is proposing to demo the existing building and place a building um, central on the site, 3,300 3, square feet roughly. Mr. Um, Robinson, could you, uh, there you go, get the camera. Oh, sorry. That's a problem here. Uh, 3,300 square foot building. We, there are currently two um, driveways on site. We're planning on closing off the western driveway and utilizing only the eastern driveway. And we are proposing um, a counterclockwise rotation. And then we are also um, pursuing cross access agreements with Panda Express to help um, enhance the safety on that corridor. Mm. Um, with respect to stormwater management, there's currently no on site um, infrastructure, well, there's inlets, but there's no stormwater features, no BMPs, no detention basins. So we are proposing to reduce impervious by 13%. And we are also going to have an underground system um, detain water in the front yard. Um, it's a rather large system, but um, it, it will meet all Monroeville's requirements. Was there a sidewalk? I'm sorry, he took it down too fast, I didn't see. There is a sidewalk, so there's currently a sidewalk along yes. here. Yes, okay. And we're going to maintain that. We're going to uh, rebuild this, this one here where we're closing off that entrance. There's the bus stop here, and then we're going to have an entrance or a sidewalk onto the site. Just a comment. I think that's a great idea that they connect to the other businesses. Those three businesses that you're going to be beside already connect to each other. Right. And I, I just think that's a great idea uh, because you can go from one business to the next without going out on the highway. Right. Yeah. My, I agree. my question would be in the back because we've had issues before with the with buildings that are going on that road is because there's neighborhood down below the hillside. Mm -hmm. Has that has anyone addressed anything with that? Because um, I see you have a couple trees there, but there's not really a whole lot. Yeah, so we're utilizing the existing vegetation on the rear of the site to, to meet the requirements of the ordinance. I okay. believe it's a maybe a 10 or 20 foot buffer that we need back there. Now there's a, there's a part right away through the back of that property. What is that, 20 foot? Right I believe away? it's 20 foot right there. So, so that would uh, keep you from building mm -hmm. back at 20 feet. So it'd be like a 20 foot buffer zone for the neighbors. Mm -hmm. um, I have a pretty picture of the building. Oh, please. Please. <laughs> <laughs> we love pretty pictures. I thought pretty that might be a good one. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. So as you can see, it's a, it's a mix of wood look fiber, cement boards, and cream colored stone finishes. Um, the ATM will be on, I believe it's this this facade here. Um, it's a standalone ATM. Okay. Anything else you want to add, Aaron? Nope. If anybody has questions, I'd be happy to answer them. Um, any questions? Yeah, I would like staff. From our staff Mr. Wilden, on this? Mr. Hugus, any issues? We're all good. And then everything with the stormwater, everything checks out, and no comments from your department. We're all good. Okay. He, he answered in the affirmative. And then Planning Commission did 
uh, recommend approval. Is there a motion on the floor? So, so moved. Second. second. So is there Third. a motion to Fourth. approve, correct? Fourth, yeah. Motion to approve? Motion yeah. and a second. Yeah. Any questions or comments? Motion and a second to approve. Roll call, please. Mrs. Gatos? Aye. Mr. Poach? Aye. Mr. Harvey? Aye. Mr. Wolfram? Aye. Mr. Ursinko? Aye. Mr. Williams? Aye. The ayes have it. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. Thank you. Good luck. Good luck. Thank you. Okay, please, Mr. number two, 21-2 uh, ST, Gateway School District. I have my microphone here now so everybody can hear me. Okay, <laughs> applicant good. is requesting you, site plan approval to renovate the existing middle school at several additions and includes the installation of an underground stormwater management swimming pool. Mm. <laughs> no, no, control system. Okay. It didn't say swimming. I wanted to see if anybody uh, was listening. We're paying attention. Them. The I'm property is located, the property is 26.05 acres located at 4450 Old William Penn Highway, tax parcel 855 N 105 in the R1 one, one family residential, single family residential zoning district. Planning Commission has recommended approval. Gentlemen, could you remove your mask, please? Absolutely. Well, gentlemen, With pleasure. Uh, we all signed in, and uh, if you don't mind just identifying yourselves, mm -hmm. so uh, for the record, and, uh, and like I said in the break, I, this was not by design to stick you at the end like this. We would uh, you know, to make you wait this whole time. But Sorry, I'm used to it. We appreciate you hanging around. Yes, I'm sure, Dr. Shore, you, you are definitely used to it. While they're signing in, I'll introduce myself. Thank My you. name is Hank Kochik. I'm the architect with Axis Architecture, 2328 Pitcairn Road, Monroeville. William Short, Superintendent, Gateway School District, 9000 Gateway Campus Boulevard, Monroeville, PA, 15146. And I'm, Gateway Thank you. and I'm Bob Brown, Facility Director for Gateway School District. Welcome, gentlemen. Thank you. So, Hank, if you want to get started. And I sure can. Great. And then, Jared, if you can get the camera up. Thank you. Okay, to, um, there we go. To familiarize everybody, uh, it, the, the plan is color coded here. The gray areas are the existing school building, the blue areas are where we are proposing additions. The, this color gray is new parking that we're proposing, and this piece is improved parking or existing parking. The yellow are concrete sidewalks that we're proposing to go in. The um, start off with several things. We are not proposing to change the the traffic patterns outside the outside the site, so we shouldn't have that conversation. <laughs> Um, we are we are improving the traffic patterns on the site. We are we are we have now separated bus drop off traffic from parent drop off traffic to to make it a safer site for that area. The the vehicular parent drop off will, will come and drop around this way, drop off at this at this spot, and either exit here or exit here. The buses come in separate from this this vehicular traffic and they loop around and they they drop off at, at this entrance and then continue back out um, we are we are providing a sidewalk along the along the road down here we are providing additional sidewalks a lot in the, and improving all the existing sidewalks on the site the classroom we have some four classroom additions fingers kind of sticking out of the end of the building here and we we do some some work in the cafeteria and the kitchen area we we, we, we do the kitchen and, and uh, the cafeteria we add an auxiliary gym in this space we're redoing the, the technology education spaces we're creating several different wings or pods to the building we have the academic pod over here and we divide that up by by grade level to kind of help with the, the flow inside the building. We have the, the new main front entrance. Right now, the visitor entrance is here. We move that to this auditorium entrance and it becomes the main entrance. And we move administration to that area to allow one main entrance for all visitors to, to come and go out of the building. We have a, a fine arts wing. We have an athletic wing. And then we, in, this, in the center of the building, we have the media center. You mentioned administration. Is that administration of? That school Just this school's the administration, school. not the district administration. The two blue areas on either side of the cafeteria, is that 
cafeteria area? Or no? This is cafeteria and kitchen area. This, this blue area is fine arts and some additional kitchen space. And over here, these blue areas are, this, this blue area is technology education because right now technology education is in this area. So we take this area and make this an auxiliary gym. So you have a gym and a gym and a cafeteria separated with some corridors so that all the, the public <coughs> space in the back of the building is all, all so located that's away. Area, uh, that you were just yeah, pointing to, that's loading docks now, isn't it? it, it it's open air. It's so open, we yes. connecting those yeah. areas that you see in blue. The loading dock now comes to this, this space. I have some uh, pretty pictures too, if you want to see that. Not to out of that chase Wow. Looks good. Yeah, that was nice. So um, the thing that we're keeping is that there's a lot of existing brick on the building. We're, we're cleaning it and, and, uh, and maintaining it. But that brick, when it's clean and maintained, is typically is that standard yellow brick that we see throughout that was built in the 50s. So that piece stays. With that, we try to update the building and modernize the building with some metal panels, and, and we do some work with the windows and, and some things along that. So this is, this is the, the front of the building. This is the main entrance we're talking about. The auditorium is this piece here. We, this is another view of the front of the building. Um, so with the, that is, we're looking at it from Old William Penn Highway. Yes, mm -hmm. yes. Yeah. And so what you can see happening here with those, with those additions that we, that we did put a, across here, it makes this whole front face of the building look like a brand new building. Yeah. The only piece that, that really we're not, we're not dressing up is the face of the auditorium, and we're, we're dressing that up by cleaning it. But the rest of it, this is that classroom wing. This is, this is the existing entrance, visitor entrance, where we, we do some work. Then, we, then this becomes that administration piece for the building with uh, guidance and nurses and those types of things happening in that. And this is, that, is the auditorium is that what back there. what you were pointing to just there? Was that the, the current auditorium entrance? This is right. the current auditorium entrance, yes. yes. Mm -hmm. And we redo that ramp and we redo, redo to that whole space and brighten it up. It's pretty dark and, and, and there's a pretty decent overhang. And the ramp is not in, a, in an ideal You're location. You're going to keep the parking in front of that whole area that's there now? Or are you changing that at all? Yes, if we, if we flip back over, I can talk a little bit about that. We, we add some visitor parking right along here, right along the auditorium. So that's close to this entrance now. Okay. ADA parking and visitor parking right along there. We, we keep some of the parking that was along here, but we add behind that in the grass area where those, where those so large trees back. are, yes. okay. we, we can add parking there. So okay. we add a, a decent amount of parking along those areas. We do stay within the, the setbacks everywhere so we're, we're not even encroaching on any of that yeah because when you have big when they had big events there you know people mm -hmm. were parked all the way around the back and having to come all the way around to, you know right mm -hmm. so we've added we've added 111 new parking spaces okay. oh, wow. Wow. to the 146 Did you add air existing conditioning? excuse Are they me getting air conditioning? yes yes Are yes. They? yes i didn't have good job <laughs> <laughs> it's hard to believe some of our buildings don't have air yeah, wait. Yeah. Yeah. it's hard to believe we survived that yes <laughs> you were tougher back then. I was tough. I was tough back in the day. <laughs> <laughs> Dr. Short, Mr. Brown, is there anything you want to add uh, about this project overall? Uh, understanding that the, uh, the, the building itself, the initial Monroeville North Junior High building, as it was called back in the day, and, and prior to that was, was a middle school uh, uh, ground was broken in 1952, and Harry S. Truman was president. <laughs> Uh, and it, it's nearing 70 years old, and uh, there, there's a lot of work. Uh, uh, we recognize the value of the property and the building itself, and, and we feel that uh, by consolidating, we're doing a service to the taxpayers as, as well and being fiscally responsible. Is South Junior High coming down or Cleveland? What's uh, coming that down? That will still be maintained uh, during the renovation process here. We will be taking the students from uh, Gateway Middle School over to Wasside Middle School, which is South Junior High. Okay. And that, after the completion, be consolidating over in that building. Yes, yeah, so if you can explain, because yes. yeah, the, there's the a lot of moving parts yes. to this. Yeah. 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 Absolutely. Um, uh, you could just uh, just explain the consolidation so everybody knows. Yeah, uh, upon approval, um, both buildings, Mossad Middle School and Gateway Middle School, are uh, probably at 50% capacity right now. So we have two buildings. South at one point had nearly 1,200 students in it. 
uh, back in the 70s and 80s, and the same thing with Monroeville North. So there is ample room uh, availability that we would be able to take the students here in the 7-8 building, transfer them over to the 5-6 building during the time of renovation. That way we can allow uh, the work to be completed free of any students, uh, any interference, uh, any problems that may occur. Uh, during the one and a half year, two year renovation phase, the building would be complete. Then we would transfer grades five through eight over to the new building. So it'd be five to eight in that building. That is correct, yes. And then what, nine to 12 at the high nine school? Nine to 12 at the high school, and then we'd still maintain the four elementary buildings, which are K through four. Okay, thank you. Mm -hmm. All right. Uh, you good, Mr. Brown? I am, thank you. Very good. Uh, council, any questions for? The applicants here. It looks nice. It looks great. It looks yep. Thank great. you. I think it's a great it, idea. It would be something that uh, upon completion, I think everyone would be proud of in our community. Yeah, yeah. yeah and I know, I'm sure that you know, the school board members and, and, and you and your staff and, and everyone worked very hard to get to this point. And Absolutely. There's a lot of options on the table for many, many years, and uh, mm -hmm. this looks great. And uh, you know, tip the, the hat to you, everybody over there. Yeah, the building would provide plenty of growth, too. Uh, we, we took into uh, consideration the uh, uh, construction uh, homes over near Evergreen uh, and the apartment complex as well. Yes. So uh, there is added space in that building. It's a good use of the space. We're yes. glad to see it mm -hmm. upgraded instead of yep. torn down. Okay. Very good. Right. Council, is there motion to approve? Second. Motion to approve and a second. Any other questions or comments? Council. Roll call, please. Mr. Williams? Aye. Mr. Osinko? Aye. Mr. Wolfram? Aye. Mr. Harvey? Aye. Mr. Poach? Aye. Mrs. Gatos? Aye. The ayes have it. Good luck with the project next. Thank you, thank you everyone. If you don't thank mind you. the timeline for us, if you could maybe oh, speak yeah. to that. You said, you said a year now, that, now that we got step we, one taken care of. We, we, we plan on breaking ground this summer, and it'll be a two-year construction project. So the school year of the 23-24, of it will be occupied. So to Dr. Short, to your point, uh, for, so this fall of 21, the, kid, the students will be shuffled around. Uh, that is correct. Pending school board approval. Uh, we're awaiting the bids to come in on the project. Okay. Uh, formal approval, we're hoping to be soon, soon within <laughs> a couple weeks. Uh, at that point in time, we've already begun planning for this, and announcements should be forthcoming to our constituents. Okay? Thank you so Thank much. You. Thank you. Have a great day. Okay. Yep. Right. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Council, move over to our motions. We have one motion this evening. Okay, a motion to install streetlights on Clover Drive on the utility poles closest to the following home addresses, 232 Clover Drive, 244 Clover Drive, and 252 Clover Drive. There is an attachment from a petition that was uh, submitted last the last uh, meeting. If council wants to look at that. I think council is aware of the request. Yes, this was discussed uh, at our last meeting by a resident, and it was brought up in the past, and uh, maybe a little miscommunication, and uh, but now it looks like everything's in order. So is there a motion on the floor? So motion, motion to approve. approve. Motion to approve and a second. Very good. Any other comments or questions, council? Roll call, please. Mrs. Gatos? Aye. Mr. Poach? Aye. Mr. Harvey? Aye. Mr. Wolfram? Aye. Mr. Arsenko? Aye. Mr. Williams? Aye. The ayes have it. Council, moving over to our resolutions, we have uh, a bunch. Yeah, the first Seven. one was tabled last month, so if uh, I'd like council. to just keep that tabled. Do we have to make a motion to do that? You just want to, the council just wants to keep that yeah, table. continuation of the tabling. Leave it on the table. Yeah, okay. council so does no not action. need to act on that item yeah. unless someone wants to make a motion otherwise. Seeing none, we'll move over to the second item. Okay, uh, this is a housekeeping item, which uh, most of these are. Resolution exonerating the real estate tax collector from the collection of uncollected taxes for the year 2020. Council has... Motion to approve. I second it. Motion, motion to second motion to, approve. to approve. Questions or comments? Tim, if you want to enlighten everybody on... Yeah, there is a uh, figure, as soon as I can find it, that Mr. Fulkerson, our tax collector, and as per the borough code and, and the Commonwealth law, that they, we have to exonerate uh, what he has not collected. And um, I can't find that. Um, yeah, I got it. It's in your pink section. In the pink section? Mm -hmm. 
All right. And but to clarify though, this doesn't mean that these people are off the hook. No, 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 no. They go in. Uh, they are right now currently into the delinquency stage. Um, tax collectors off the hook. Exactly. Tax <laughs> collectors off the hook. There you go. There you go. The tax collectors off the hook. Is it 187, 458? There 52? you go, 180. Thank you very much. I was having, I'm having a heart. There we go. I, okay, the pink pages. Okay. There, 187, 488.52. So that is what we have approximately $9 million is what we collect in real estate tax. So that is what we have not collected out of $9 million. So I would have to say that is a pretty good percentage. Pretty, pretty good. And this is all public information. So that is correct. This lists all the delinquent, or the, so they are currently in delinquency at this point. These items for these uh, taxpayers. Yes, they, at the end of 2020, they would have been in delinquency. Yeah, so from taxes that were due in 2020. Got it. Okay, council, <coughs> is there a uh, motion on this item? There is. There's already a motion and a second. Okay, I, yeah. thank you for clarifying that. Any other comments or questions? Roll call, please. Mrs. Gatos? Aye. Mr. Poach? Aye. Mr. Harvey? Aye. Mr. Wolfram? Aye. Mr. Ursinko? Aye. Mr. Williams? Aye. The ayes have it. Mr. Little. Okay, uh, resolution number three, a resolution implementing the National Incident Management System, otherwise known as NIMS, and this is uh, for, we have a system, and this is nationally from the federal government, so all local governments and, uh, and cities and counties operate under the same technology in the same terminology uh, to, that we abide by this. So this is um, how often, uh, Doug, how often we get this, you know, maybe every three years I think we well, pass we this? We just have to update it. We okay. just have to update it. We've done it before, same thing. Okay, all right. Motion to approve. Second, second. Motion second to approve. Any other comments or questions? Council. Roll call, please. Mr. Williams? Aye. Mr. Arasenko? Aye. Mr. Wolfram? Aye. Mr. Harvey? Aye. Mr. Poach? Aye. Mrs. Gatos? Aye. The ayes have it. Mr. Little. Okay, uh, item number four is a resolution adopting the 2020 Allegheny County oh. Hazard Mitigation Plan, which is what we follow the uh, county's uh, hazard plan. Motion to approve. Second. second. Motion is second to approve. Questions or comments? Roll call, please. Mrs. Gatos? Aye. Mr. Poach? Aye. Mr. Harvey? Aye. Mr. Wolfram? Aye. Mr. Arsenko? Aye. Mr. Williams? Aye. The ayes have it. Mr. Little, next item. Okay, the next item is a resolution authorizing the display of various event banners at the corner of the intersection of states uh, routes 22 and 48 within the right of way property belonging to the Pennsylvania Department of Transportation. Motion. Uh, and we have uh, two event banners on there, which we can add to that if there's any others that uh, are forthcoming Motion. throughout the year. Motion and a second. Motion and second I, to approve, correct? Who, who yes. seconded it? Your motion is to approve? Yes. Yes. A second? Yes. I second. Okay, thank you. Steve. Questions or comments? Seeing none, roll call, please. Mr. Williams? Aye. Mr. Arsenko? Aye. Mr. Wolfram? Aye. Mr. Harvey? Aye. Mr. Poach? Aye. Mrs. Gatos? Aye. The ayes have it. Mr. Little? Okay, and the next two resolutions, the last two resolutions, are for Act 152 funding uh, for the, the condemnation and demolishing of three properties on Broadway Avenue. First one is a resolution confirming that the municipality of Monroeville has formally requested Act 152 funds and has designated an official to perform the required duties between the municipality of Monroeville and the Allegheny County Economic Development and assures the provisions of local matching funds in compliance with all other provisions of Act 152. Motion to approve. Second. Second. Questions or comments? Roll call, please. Mrs. Gatos? Aye. Mr. Poach? Aye. Mr. Harvey? Aye. Mr. Wolfram? Aye. Mr. Arsenko? Aye. Mr. Williams? Aye. The ayes have it. Mr. Little. Okay, and the last one is a resolution that the municipality of Monroeville determines and declares that the indicated structures meet the blighted property definition under Act 152 and will undergo local agency condemnation proceedings. Motion to approve. Second. Mm -hmm. Motion second to approve. Uh, questions or comments mm -hmm. and I just have the the question of the the properties themselves I think just the addresses are on the Broadway oh. one uh, there's two actual uh, structures that are on one parcel Mr. Hugus if you good evening I'm shed back. some light on this absolutely 
So there's three structures total. The first one's at 4507 Coffee Street, which is actually at the intersection of Coffee and Route 130, Broadway Boulevard. This is a very old, dilapidated. I have a not so pretty picture. Mm -hmm. One might ring a bell to you. Yes. Mr. Robinson? Oh, I didn't know you had, you had pictures up there. No, I didn't know that. Yep, oh, okay. Yeah, yep. right. It's an also we pretty picture. Good idea. Yep. Mm -hmm. Windows are open half the time. Very good. Okay. That's the first one. And then the next two are side by side, which are at. Uh, 2749 and 2759 Broadway Boulevard, which is across the street from the AOH Club. Oh, I brought this up before. Yeah. There are you one. Yeah. Another not so pretty picture. Yep. Mm -hmm. Ward one is very happy for this. Yeah. And actually, <laughs> we're probably more apt to receive the grant because um, they're kind of all in the same area. Yeah. Great. Very good. Any other questions okay. or comments, Council? Mm -hmm. nope. Seeing none, there's a motion and a second to approve this item. <coughs> Roll call, please. Mrs. Gatos? Aye. Mr. Poach? Aye. Mr. Harvey? Aye. Mr. Wolfram? Aye. Mr. Arsenko? Aye. Mr. Williams? Aye. The ayes have it. Thank you, Mr. Hugus. Thanks, Paul. Council, moving on to our ordinances. We have two this evening. Mr. Ratcher, if you would. First ordinance is an ordinance of the Municipality of Monroeville, Allegheny County, Pennsylvania, amending ordinance number 2730, the 2021 fee schedule to amend the timber harvesting permit fees. And what this involves is uh, there, are, there are fees obviously to harvest timber in Monroeville. There's a state law, the acronym for it is ACRE. Don't ask me to remember it now. I do know the A's agricultural. But anyway, they, they dictate uh, timber harvesting for the most part. Uh, the municipality has very little control over it. It was brought to our attention that we had some fees that were outside of the, uh, um, the ordinary range of fees for the amount of work we do. So this is to put those fees into line with what is appropriate for the municipality's uh, involvement in uh, timber harvesting projects. Okay, very good. Uh, motion. There, there's a motion, motion to approve and a second. Uh, second. And this, we, we talked about this briefly at a previous meeting, I believe, uh, and staff was tasked on finding this the right figure, and uh, right. That's, where, that's where we got to these numbers. So, motion is second to approve. Any other comments? Roll call, please. Mr. Williams? Aye. Mr. Arsenko? Aye. Mr. Wolfram? Aye. Mr. Harvey? Aye. Mr. Poach? Aye. Mrs. Gatos? Aye. The ayes have it. Mr. Ratcher. An ordinance of the Municipality of Monroeville, Allegheny County, Pennsylvania, amending ordinance numbers 637, 824, 1261, 1450, 1654, 1827, 2020, 2169, 2326, 2434, 2573, and 2664, fixing the compensation of the tax collector for collection of real property taxes levied by the Municipality of Monroeville for the years 2022, 2023, 2024, and 2025. And this is a housekeeping item, essentially. Uh, at a prior meetings, it was discussed um, that the tax collector's compensation is decided prior to the, uh, the election, uh, actually to nominate, to, to excuse me, to turning in nominate, uh, nominating forms. And so what this does is just sets that compensation for the next term of the tax collector. Motion to approve. Second. Motion is second to approve. Any questions or comments, Council? Seeing none, roll call, please. Mrs. Gatos? Aye. Mr. Poach? Aye. Mr. Harvey? Aye. Mr. Wolfram? Aye. Mr. Arsenko? Aye. Mr. Williams? Aye. The ayes have it. Thank you, Mr. Ratcher. Do you have anything else you want to add for a report this evening? No additional comments. Okay. Thank you. Mayor. Thank you. Mr. Little, move over to you. Yes, uh, the first item <coughs> is that, as most of the community knows, we have our annual Jack Sedlak Memorial Cleanup Day on Saturday, April the 24th at 9 a.m., beginning at 9 a.m., and, um, and then afterwards up at the park. We have a uh, picnic with prizes, but um, Jared, you have the uh, our little uh, video of the uh, Sedlak cleanup day. 
Hello, my name is Jake Sedlak, and I'm getting a jump on the 26th annual Jack Sedlak cleanup day. That's right, it's been 26 years since Monroeville set aside a day to clean up litter and trash from its parks, roadways, and schoolyards. Bags, gloves, and vests will all be provided by Monroeville, and a super cool t-shirt is given to every participant. So gather up your friends, your neighbors, your family, your coworkers, your soccer teams, your baseball teams, your Girl Scout troops, your Boy Scout troops, your church groups, and join me in cleaning up the community that we have so much pride in. Don't forget, after we are done cleaning up, we can join the rest of the volunteers for a socially distant cleanup day picnic complete with fabulous raffle prizes. And psst, I even heard that there's a couple pirate autograph items in the drawings. <laughs> to register and for more information, contact the Monroeville Recreation and Parks Department at 412-856-1006 or go on the web at monroeville.pa.us. And see you on April 24th. Did I say bowling league? I want to say, ah, I want to say car club too. Ah. <laughs> That's great. Great job. Great job. Great job. Great job. Good job, Jay and Jared. <laughs> Jay Sedlak and Jared right. Robinson from our TV department. We're going to have more of that to come, too, <laughs> as the months roll on. Um, okay. Um, so all right. Have, so, so to register. Go ahead. Go ahead, Mary. You have it in front of you, actually. You have a bit. <laughs> what? Well, you can register oh. through the rec department. All the information is on our website as well. And get registered for Saturday, April 24th. And this can be done through the Recreation Department, but everything can be done online as well. Great. Okay. Okay, uh, summer employment. Uh, council um, discussion on summer employment, any kind of seasonal employees or anything? Or Yes, I, w I have actually have a comment on that. Um, you have the deadline being sometime this month. Yeah, that And we was. haven't really gotten a chance to even kind of put it out there yet. So can we please at least extend the deadline for ap sure. applicants? Yeah. Mm -hmm. At least a week. And uh, Mr. Little, okay. as far as the <laughs> budget, <laughs> what, uh, how many? We yeah. have twenty thousand dollars in the budget for it. So let's see what kind of um, applicants, ap applicants we get, and we can go from that next month. And Joe, we have any applicants right now? We have some coming in. Yeah, last couple of days a few uh, have come in. And Probably a lot of ones that have done it with us before that know, but maybe yeah, there's people out there that don't. Couple months, but with COVID and kids not being in school. Oh. See, that's the thing. And these are, right. and as far as to qualify to apply, you have to be a high school graduate and currently enrolled in college or a secondary. If you're in college or if you go to college in the fall, that's okay too. You have to be resident of Monroeville. Yes, yeah, certainly. Resident of Monroeville and graduate high school and either going to college in the fall or currently in college or a trade school of sort. And uh, yeah, so please, uh, that information is on our website, yeah. I'm assuming. So they do the app there. application on website too? Yes. On the website yes. Okay. Yep, and all the information and the application is on the website. So if anyone knows anyone uh, for summer work, okay. get your information in. Mr. Little. Okay, uh, stimulus money. Uh, as we were talking at the beginning of the uh, meeting, uh, Monroeville is scheduled to get federal stimulus money, uh, $2.71 million half of that this year and half next year. And approximately 1.33 million will be coming in by June 10th. The uh, state, Pennsylvania, gets the distribution of all the, the counties and the cities and the municipalities in May, and then they have 30 days. They're supposed to get that by May 10th, and they're supposed <laughs> to distribute it by June 10th. Um, and the subject came up about um, the use of the money and if we have a, uh, a reduction in specific uh, uh, taxes or revenue like we anticipate possibly on business tax, that money can go uh, to fill that void. Um, any questions on the stimulus money um, coming in? Okay. All right, number four is uh, we're going to have, and I don't know, uh, if this has been done in Monroeville before, probably has been. Uh, we're going to have a Meet the Candidates night. This was the uh, um, thought brainchild of Jared Robinson, our TV director. He and I uh, 
have meetings every so often on uh, how to um, enhance the TV station uh, and use it to get communication out there to the public on what we are doing. And his idea was to have a, a Meet the Candidates night, and I thought this was an excellent idea. Um, we have notified, at least through phone uh, initially, and then a letter will be going out hopefully by the end of this week on the format. And uh, Sean Logan, our uh, former state senator and also now head of the uh, visit Monroeville, is going to uh, monitor the, uh, in the uh, Meet the Candidates night. We don't look it to be uh, any kind of lengthy debate, nothing like that, or a question and answer, just basically the candidates so they can introduce themselves to the public and mention to the public on why they're running and what they would do for Monroeville. Uh, now, Sean may have, we may have a couple other uh, questions coming up, but that will all be in the letter that, I, that I'll be sending out to the, uh, you know, to the candidates. We have nine candidates that are running. Uh, most are opposed. There's two that are not opposed, uh, but they will still be, in, they're still invited also. Um, okay, any questions from council on that? Okay. Is that, is that going to be here in the... Uh, it's going to be right here. It's right going to be televised here. Okay. And uh, we will have the candidates up here on the dais, uh, you know, spaced apart, socially spaced, just like council is now. Um, and, um, okay, uh, moving along, we have Allegheny County Paving Projects. I gave the council a, a letter that uh, I received. The uh, roads by the uh, Allegheny County that are going to be paved, so this is for the benefit of the public, uh, Allegheny County Department of Works is completing plans this year for in-house paving. As part of the project, we expect that the following roads will be milled and paved. Haymaker Road from Saunders Station Road to Mayberry Drive. Lynn Avenue and Monroeville Road from 1,000 feet east of Chestnut Street to James Street. And Beatty Road from Center Road to Old William Penn Highway. We'll be put this on our website. So if anybody has any questions, they can just go right to our website. So uh, residents know if they live on a county road, what roads will be paved by Allegheny County. Any questions on that from uh, Council? No, sir. Okay. And the last thing um, on here is uh, we receive periodically those properties that the uh, Tricog Land Bank plan on acquiring in the, the latest one is 104 Elmwood Street uh, here in Monroeville. And I, I bring this up at the meeting so it gets into the minutes so council is aware of it and then I just have to sign off on it that uh, everybody in Monroeville is okay with it, me and council and the officials. Any well, comments on that? that's going to happen, Tim. That's right on my street where I live. Is that your house? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe. Maybe. <laughs> when you get no, home, you are you moving? You're telling something you're not Greg. telling us, Craig? No, I'm not. <laughs> All right. Okay. Well, you All beat right. me to that one. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> you got your shot. You got to be quick up here, Ron. And I, that that's concludes. Great land bank. And it's great for Alton. <laughs> yeah. Great yes. for Monroeville. That concludes my report. Excellent. We'll go to our uh, Director of Public Works and Engineering. We have a uh, playground equipment repairs and upgrades item. Good evening again. Good Hold evening. On. So, um, Mrs. Gators had asked, and she's the liaison to the Parks and Recs Board. Um, over the last year, we have um, identified a lot of playground equipment that we either had to decommission or remove uh, because of the condition of it. And um, as per the manager's direction, which I understand, we weren't replacing, repairing any of these items because of the cost associated with it. Um, so Linda wanted us to generate a list of uh, all those items that have been removed. This spreadsheet. I've asked that yeah, I'm for a spreadsheet to all be put at your station, so you have some direction. It on was uploaded. Discussion. Everybody have one. Everybody have one. Everybody got one. Okay. It's not turning in. And. Um, she wanted to yeah. discuss this tonight. Yes. So as you can see, there's there's 12 different parks that um, there's a variety of, of equipment um, that needs to either be replaced, repaired, or installed new. And uh, we Mike has done a lot of work, legwork with this, meeting with vendors, 
to establish those costs and what's associated with them. Um, one of the issues that we're mainly looking at is the lead time once we order these, how long it's going to take to get in. Like everything else, getting materials and product is, is a very lengthy project. Um, you know, we may get these by the end of summer. Um, so the earlier we order them, the better we will be to, to get them done. So um, if you have any questions, or Linda, yeah. you want to add anything here? Yeah, I want to kind of start a little bit at um, how this kind of all got rolling was um, I had realized that we don't have any handicapped swings um, in, in any of our parks anywhere. Um, so through that conversation that I've had with Mr. Strong, Mr. Yugas, um, we started looking at um, adding some swings for the kids. Um, and then that also led us into some uh, reflective swings for um, kids with autism or that are on the spectrum that they can ride directly with a parent. I think, Jared, you have some pictures to show. This would be the two different swings for the age groups um, for the two to five year old children as well as five to 12. We would look to put four of the two to fives at the community park. Uh, one at Garden Park, one at Pioneer Park, and one at um, Hawkeye, as well as a 5 to 12 um, at Hawkeye. Then the second one, this is the reflective swing so that a parent or an older sibling can ride with the child. And we would put these at um, Hawkeye, Overlook, and Bellwood. So I think this would help um, a lot of our residents that have nowhere to take their children within our community. And as much as we try to offer, um, this has never been addressed, and I was kind of shocked by that. So I'm really happy to have this take part of this. Um, one of the other things that came up at um, Heritage Park, I'm, yeah, Heritage, was going to be to repair a piece of equipment. Well, for just a tiny bit more money, um, we can install what's called a space shuttle. I mean, I, instead of repairing the space shuttle, we're going to use a swirl with me, and it's the one I didn't give them a picture of, but I'll pass it down. Um, this will take it from where one child can ride to where three children can actually ride together and they can sit in. So they would also be very welcoming for children with handicaps. So um, it, it gives us, as you see, how many parks we actually can address some issues in as far as that. And then we actually went a little couple steps further where like at the community park to add a ice maker in um, to help there. Um, and then some replacement of some badly needed where someone's going to get cut and hurt and we're going to end up sued. So um, Mike Strom did a fabulous job, him and Paul, going to the parks, addressing the issues that are needed. Um, in addition of a drinking fountain, an ADA drinking fountain at um, Evergreen Park. And I actually had someone send me a picture of one of our slides this weekend because they were worried about it. Um, so, oh, and then we're going to, this is the spinner that, um, we're going to install that will have, how many is in here, Mike? In the, for, her, for Heritage or for? Yeah, this plan here with oh, the, the, And that's for the Beachwood Park project. Yeah, for yeah, the Beachwood. Things. So the Beachwood project is, is we took all the old equipment out of Beachwood Park and we're going to use some of the equipment we took from Evergreen Park when we did the renovation there that was in good shape and we're going to reinstall it at Beachwood Park. And then we're going to and add then, some new. Yeah, then we're going to add a few other things to just enhance the rest of the park. We couldn't just have a, um, a 5 to 12 structure there and a swing. Um, there's some smaller spring bouncers and uh, a couple other items, some benches and some trash receptacles, just to finish out that park. So the total cost of that park changeover from the old equipment that was in really bad shape to what we have now is it's, it's a 11500 $83 complete park renovation. Is that renovation. in addition to this? No. No, that's included that's in this cost. Yeah. Everything yeah. I told you yes. so far is inclusive in this number. Um, and, the, and, of course, Beachwood is the park that is used by the kids at Ramsey School um, that we maintain. Um, so all of that, as well as um, the other thing that we talked about is um, a, a paver rental um, so that they can fix some of the walkways for, for safety reasons, um, haven't been done in a long time, needs to be done. Um, they've addressed the areas that will have the materials. We just need to rent the machine. And lastly um, is a, it's called, it's for the turf and it will be a fertilizing machine that we will actually purchase. 
and it will work on all of ours. I will pass this picture down for anyone that wants to see it. It will actually work on all of our parks, Why not just, just the baseball. I'm sorry, I can put it on the TV. Okay. Yeah, we can do that. Uh, not just baseball, not okay. just soccer, but it will actually work for all of our parks. So we can actually start to upgrade some of the other ones for use for those um, activities as well. So what I'm asking from the rest of you here on council is this whole project is is a total of and where did I write my final figure at? It's approximately seventy six thousand dollars. And what I would like to do is have a um, approval from you that we can take it from the sale of the pool, and that way we're putting it back into our parks um, for money that was gotten by Motion that. Motion to approve that. Second. Motion is second to approve. Now, just to clarify, though, so the one in front of us, Mrs. Gatos, has sixty-one thousand. Yeah, right. And then, and then you're going to add <laughs> in the money question. for the which what is the equipment, the, the equipment of the uh, fertilizing machine, which is on one of my sheets somewhere. Linda, also, I was going to ask the question. Linda, uh, also, like I said, your uh, paper rental also. I'm not sure. Are we supposed to buy the material? To yeah, so we'll, we rented the paver for a two-week period. Yeah, I see. And then yeah. we'll run it. Public Works will run it. We'll get the material hauled in. Okay. And yeah. from our from our paver and that's program. That's seventy six. Then I guess. Yes. Yeah. And and um, they have worked out this. You know, they'll work out the schedule where our Public Works guys are doing a lot of the inst uh, the installations and the all of that, um, which saves you know a lot of money not putting out for bed and. Um, but I think it's going to be, it, it adds, all the things that we're adding are such a great addition for, I think, a very small cost. No, absolutely. I mean, this is a great job, gentlemen, to getting this up and running. And yeah, as you mentioned, Mrs. Gatos, this is not only just, these aren't just enhancements. These are, we actually have some safety issues and things that we need to fix up to, to begin with. And as far as the pool money, these are the reasons, you know, this is one of the reasons why, you know, I advocated for the pool money to stay within the Parks and Recreation Department is a perfect use of, of those funds. And uh, I commend Council for uh, supporting that as well whenever uh, that happened last year. And there is a motion and a second to approve. Anyone else have any comments or questions? No, I really want to thank both of these gentlemen here. Yeah, absolutely. Um, the, the time that they have put in with me to, to give me everything that I was asking for and looking at it and actually having vision as well um, was remarkable. Mm -hmm. And I'm very thankful. Thank you. Is the Thank delay you. in getting the supplies for this stuff because everybody's just gearing back up and manufacturing and things like that? The Suez Canal did. I was going to say, yeah. It's yeah, and, and some of the Suez some of the Canal. items are uh, the lead times uh, on a regular in, in a regular situation would be six, eight weeks. Oh. So even with so with the new COVID issues that we have, some of them may be That's as long as 10 or 12 weeks. Yeah. Right. yeah, we're hoping to get you know this stuff in that it actually can be used this year and but. Either way, the faster we approve this, the sooner they can go ahead and get ordered. But hopefully it comes in in a staggered so we don't get it all one time. <laughs> yeah. yeah. You've That'll create its own little problem. We could store some in Tim's <laughs> office. <laughs> no, I mean the man part of put it oh, together. Oh, okay. Yeah. Great. Mike, Paul, anything yes, else to add? No, sir. No, Great. just Great. thank you to council yes, thank you. for the, the help that keeps moving forward. So we appreciate it. Oh, absolutely. Thank you. And thank you to the staff and the guys that will be doing all the, the work whenever the stuff does come in, too. Yeah, definitely. So motion is second to approve. Roll call, please. Mrs. Gatos. Aye. Mr. Poach. Aye. Mr. Harvey. Aye. Mr. Wolfram. Aye. Mr. Osenko. Aye. Mr. Williams. Aye. The thank ayes you. have. Thank you, gentlemen. Yep. I appreciate it. Excellent. All thank you. Thank you, you very much. on council as well. I have. Uh, if it, we are going to open up for public comment on any municipal items, anyone from the public that is still hanging around here, do you have any comments? Uh, Dan Gerhardt again. <clears throat> um, I just wanted to come up and personally thank Linda for doing what you did for the parks with the um, with the handicap swings, and I really hope that we can get more handicap accessible items in our parks because I've noticed a lot lately being on the parks board um, we're running into a lot more handicapped children in our community and especially um, spectrum kids Correct. and I think it's a great idea to upgrade our parks to include these children 
so they have a place to go so they don't have to go outside of our community to another community's park that has those amenities. Um, and, and I would like just to put the, the seed out there for this council and future councils, um, please, if you could look at upgrading the park's budgets so we can beautify our parks even more so we can get more use out of them and, and possibly attract more people to our community with the amenities that we have. Because right now we do have a lot of great amenities park-wise, but there's still room for improvement. So if you could look deep further down the road and, and possibly look at increasing the park's budget so we can, because we, we actually have a full board now with a lot of involvement and we're really a lot of ideas are getting thrown around um, it's just we're restricted with money and I know things are tight right now with COVID and everything but I'm hoping that when things open up and start blossoming more and we get more businesses in here more tax revenue that we can start putting a little bit more money into our parks and making me even more beautiful Thank you. Definitely be considered at budget time. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. Anyone else from the public would like to address council? Seeing now, we're going to move over to our reports of our council members. Mrs. Gatos, uh, you have more to add? <laughs> no, I think that was probably enough. enough. Um, I'm glad that I was able to attend tonight as um, I had surgery on Wednesday, and I wouldn't have missed this for the world to be able to present this um, to everyone. <coughs> so I look forward to this being the start of something big, um, maybe next year, you know, another piece of equipment could be added to the park or something. There are some limitations. Um, it has to be ADA uh, com compliant. Um, but, you know, as the time goes on, you build on somewhere. You have to start somewhere. So I think this is a great start. And I want to just thank everybody um, for, for backing the idea. And, of course, for all the help. Thank you. Mr. Poach. Uh, just the uh, Quickly, too, as some uh, folks heard today, uh, there's been a, a stop in the uh, vaccine process for the use of the Johnson Johnson vaccine. It came out in CDC, came out midday. It's trickled. It, other states did it yesterday, and then it trickled down to Pennsylvania as, as of course, to mid midday. However, you shouldn't stop getting your vaccines. Okay, to do that, yeah, keep them go them going as well. Uh, you have it immediately available now. Um, there was an order that was going to take place next week to allow all of the groups and everybody that's eligible, that's been moved to tomorrow. So and there's no restriction, there isn't any excuse, anyone that needs to be able to get a vaccine should be able to do that, always contingent upon supply, but the sign up and eligibility is in place, you know, effective really tomorrow. Um, Allegheny County's website, the Department of Health is a great place to start, Allegheny Health Network site, as well as UPMC's are good, three good starts to do that. Many of you with other, your uh, other organizations have done it uh, to get in place. So no excuse to, to not do that. It's just been moved up. So that's good news, good news. Uh, for everything else. Again, only because some of the cases in Allegheny County, Monrova, we were just discussing it earlier. Mayor and I were talking about it a little bit here. Even in Monrova, we're not off the hook uh, to do that. So still masks, wash our hands. It does help. Uh, flu season is officially over because it didn't happen. There wasn't one. It just didn't happen this year, too, so that's great. And then finally, uh, quick congratulations out to Lieutenant Crutt. I think it's next Friday, right, Chief? Oh. He's, he's done. Uh, I'll be retiring to do that. He's our detective lieutenant to do that. And, Bill, I wish you all the luck, and I still hope to continue to hear from you because it's always interesting, too. So, <laughs> Very good. That's about it. Thank you, Mr. Poach. Mr. Harvey. Yes. Um, the first thing I wanted to do that wasn't originally on my list was uh, Mr. Young uh, kind of came up and made a situation where he asked a, a whole bunch of questions about the budget and nobody was prepared for that. So my comment to the public is if you're going to come up and ask questions like that, present it to Mr. Little prior to that so we can have the budget book at hand because nobody had anything to reference, which is the reason why we couldn't answer budget, his question. Yeah, it's on the budget. What's that? Well, not the full budget. But just to, in all fairness, Mr. Young uh, did actually email me probably a month and a half oh. or so ago. And yeah, he, 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 he emailed me about a, over a month So he was just getting his public comment in there, and uh, oh, that's it. Okay. 
because everybody. Uh, oh, I felt flat-footed about. I wanted the wrong. to. I agree. I wanted with you. to look at what he was yeah. referring to, and yeah, you yeah. know. Yeah, exactly. Okay. Um, the next thing is, is uh, the house on uh, Center Road in the 400 block uh, that I've turned into Mr. Ratcher and Mr. Hugus. Uh, that uh, I've been getting multiple calls from the neighbors because it looks like a junkyard. And if supposedly uh, code enforcement has uh, dealt with him numerous times and he just doesn't even show up at the hearings at the magistrate, is there an update on that? Mr. Yugas just bailed me out. <laughs> <laughs> He's the man. We have a uh, banker's box full of files to turn over to Mr. Ratcher. There's that much. I mean, it, w this is a four or five year episode with him. So there's a lot of documentation. So, so it'll be going it's, down uh, the court. Yeah, yeah. So he obviously we have, we have to turn over and explain everything to him so he can Because uh, his solution prepare. of getting away from the magistrate's hearings just don't go. Yeah, I mean, and there's a bench warrant out for him. I, I mean, I don't know what we said. Yeah. yeah. So, okay. Yeah. Thank you. So, so I we do have it. We All just right. have to get it to you. And last but not least, I just wanted to advise everybody that the, uh, the vaccine site at the old Westinghouse, I guess, next year? Next year. Next year. Yes. Uh, yes. I've had numerous people say that they've gone there and the line's been a mile long and in 20 minutes they had their vaccine. They got it down. They know how to do it now. Yeah. So uh, my compliments to them and uh, getting the vaccine out. I think everybody is starting to get a better system for doing it. Mm -hmm. So. Uh, the long lines, though they're long, I think they're getting them through fast, so everybody is encouraged to uh, register somewhere and, and get their vaccine, whether it's UPMC or uh, Forbes or, you know, just get it. I, I've seen too many people uh, get this uh, sickness without having the vaccine, and you don't want it. No. Uh, Thank you, Mr. Harvey. And I just Piggyback on that real quick. Yeah, it's a huge testament to Allegheny Health Network, mm -hmm. Dr. Rubino and Forbes Hospital and the staff, Highmark Health, the Next Tier Connect folks who helped organize it. Uh, the National Guard was there. It was, it was really a huge event and a real testament to everybody that came out and, uh, and, and worked the site. There was a lot of, uh, you know, higher ups in, in Highmark and, uh, uh, you know, just just helping out actually that were there. Uh, our, the CEO, David Holm, Holmgren, he was there. Uh, Really, no identification, plain clothes, and then really even just helping getting people around. So I it's think really they had something like twenty thousand vaccines. To, to they put out quite a few, and a real testament for all the the help that was put to yeah. that uh, to that site. And uh, we always thank all of our partners here, healthcare partners with the HN and, and Forbes, and certainly UPMC and, and, and their presence here as well. So uh, I'm glad you brought that up. So, uh, Mr. Wolf, from anything this evening? Yes, just a few little things. Uh, first of all, I'd like to. Thank Tom Wilson for being here, even though he was on uh, video. I hope you get better, Tom, um, better. so you can join us and everything like that. I want to thank everyone who attended tonight for whatever various reasons they were here. It was a very, well, sort of long meeting, but we, we got through it. I hope that we can solve some of the problems that we're facing, stuff like that. Uh, I want to thank Linda for bringing everything she did about the uh, uh, playground and stuff like that. Uh, I know I've heard some other people mentioned some things, but not nearly the job that you did, Linda, and everybody else involved. Thank you very much. You. And uh, just everybody stay safe. Uh, do what everybody's saying on, on console here, you know, about washing your hands and doing this and doing that. Uh, other than that, uh, I'm done. Thank you. Right. Mr. Ersenko. I wanted to echo, uh, you stole some of my thunder. I knew. But Linda, thank you. <laughs> well, I you did notes. very good. <laughs> I can see your notes. Uh, and then to Lieutenant uh, Crutt, um, Bill, I hope you have many good years to come with your retirement. And everybody, please sign up for the Joe Said Like Cleanup Day. And I am finished, sir. Thank you. Mr. Williams. No report tonight. Thank you, sir. I'm going to echo going last. I always have to repeat everybody. But yeah, it's a special, yeah, congratulations and a thank you to Lieutenant Crutt for all of his years of, of hard work and service. Uh, did a lot behind the scenes to really keep Monroeville safe and, uh, you know, Definitely a special uh, special officer, and we'll, he'll be certainly missed. And I wish him the best with his retirement. Um, uh, cleanup day, we definitely want to sign up for that. Uh, one thing I just want to bring up, this format we've been doing uh, recently, we went from uh, having Zooms, uh, Zoom meetings, which were, uh, quite frankly, terrible. Uh, yeah, we kept the business going, uh, but it was really a challenge. But uh, now that we're getting back into in-person meetings with social distancing, 
um, but we've been combining our meetings. Uh, I make the recommendation to council, but certainly it's your call as well that we continue this format until we maybe get a little bit more uh, in the clear, maybe through the governor's orders and see how things go as opposed to starting the second meeting up. I think we are getting business done appropriately having one meeting a month unless council thinks otherwise. I'm good. I agree. Okay. One meeting. Council good? Okay. Yep. So for now, but and then we can certainly revisit this every month as we go through, but definitely for next month's meeting, we will have it in the same format as far as advertising purposes, Mr. Little. Okay, so we're only going to have a council meeting next month in May. Correct. Okay. As far as advertising, and then we'll, we can always revisit it, but I think just where the numbers are kind of currently, and then I think, I believe we are still getting business done appropriately, and uh, if we need to change that, we can change that. Okay. And, uh, Thank you, everybody, for coming out here. And uh, with that, I will seek a motion to adjourn. Motion to adjourn. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? This meeting's adjourned. Thank you and good night.